И Just Got a Disney от Судинри. Hello, welcome to another stream. How about that? How about that? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, hello, Mr. Botka. Apparently, potatoes. Drag Zorn. Hot and plots. Good duck. Yet another beat. Sixty-nine stream. Yet another Japan. That's Japan. By the way, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Welcome to our epic club. Uh, this is Nur, Sergio, Sergio. Uh, hello, hello, welcome, 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 yet another hello, hello, hello. Uh, thrice, maybe, like, <laughs> I don't know, hello everyone. Uh, one uh, uh, one course AO or in course or Kolumbetka, hello. So today is Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, Nafle, Nafle, hello. And uh, that means today, according to the schedule, we are supposed to be developing a virtual machine in C. Uh, all right, but uh, recently I was actually dealing with a lot of problems uh, with the build system for our virtual machine because our virtual machine has to work um, Has to be built in four different major systems out nine. Hello. Hello uh, Yatko, welcome. Welcome. Welcome so um, Yeah, so we have to be able to build this entire thing on Linux Mac OS <clears throat> Windows 
MSVC, MinGW, and a FreeBSD. So, like, and also uh, we should be able to build it uh, on Linux uh, with Clang and GCC. So, there is a lot of cross platform ability and cross compilerness that gets involved in here, which makes it kind of difficult to build this entire stuff. And so, we could just use like one of the build tools, like CMake or something like that, but uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's just an additional dependency that increases the cost of maintenance, so you get CMake. So you cannot use CMake without Make, you cannot really use Make without Shell. So, and like you, you, you use one tool and another tool starts to suck in like the whole infrastructure with itself. So, uh, like you think you're dependent on one thing, and in fact you're dependent on thousands of them uh, implicitly, and this is the cost that is like becomes obvious only like later. Um, and uh, what's interesting, it works in the big companies because big companies have a lot of resources to actually accommodate this entire cost. But we are not a big company, we are a one uh, bold guy. <laughs> well, we're actually a community, so people contribute uh, here as well, so I'm not the only one who's developing this entire thing. So we are many, but we are not as powerful as some corporations, right? So. What, what I decided to do, uh, I decided to revive my old idea <clears throat> of using uh, C as a, a scripting language for building things. Uh, as a scripting language for building, uh, building things. So let me demonstrate you what I mean. Cum Unity. Cool. You're very funny, what can I say? Uh, so essentially, right now, we have this bunch of scripts, like build sh, and since uh, shell is kind of... It's not impossible to have shell on Windows, but it's really uncommon to, to have it, and people usually prefer to have something like bot scripts. Wait a second, why? Oh yeah, and uh, people usually prefer have bad, uh, bad scripts, especially when they build it on SVC. So we have separate script for that. Uh, but the problem is that those scripts do the same thing. So uh, what if we rewrote those scripts in C, right? So C, like um, on Windows we have to use uh, CMD, on Linux we have to use Shell, I mean on Unix. Uh, but C works everywhere, right? C works on Linux, C works on FreeBSD, C works on Mac OS, C works on Windows. So uh, if we manage to rewrite this entire thing in C, so that uh, such script would be uh, more uh, cross-platform, right? Such script will be more cross-platform. And what's cool is that uh, to build your project, the only thing you will need is a C compiler, right? So imagine that you have a, a some sort of a script like build C, uh, which is cross platform, cross platform enough, cross plot platform enough, uh, right? So something like this, and the only thing you have to do is just to bootstrap this script like this. Uh, let me let me put it this way, right? You just bootstrap it. And you have a build system that then, when run, uh, builds everything else, right? So, and essentially, really, like, the only thing you need is a C compiler. You don't need even shell, you don't need any PowerShell, any CMD, any make or anything. You have a project in C, you have a C compiler, you can build the whole project using only the C compiler and nothing else. Like, seriously, not even this invisible costs that people usually tend to ignore like make and shell or anything like that so you bootstrap it once and then it basically builds everything for you and it's not that much of a you know actions in my opinion because majority of the modern build systems um have this two step of build anyway right usually you have configuration step and only then the build step right so you can consider like bootstrapping the build system as the configuration step why not um yeah and also once the executable is bootstrapped it uh, can for example rebuild itself when it detects changes in build.c right so maybe you never have to uh, like bootstrap it ever again because the the executable starts to manage itself right so and this is basically the idea of the build system that i had for several years already i think i have it like for three years or something um and i was just you know hypothesizing about this entire stuff 
Right. Uh, so, but I think since I have this playground where I experiment with things uh, like virtual machine and stuff, um, I'm thinking maybe I can experiment on that project with the build system as well. Right, uh, so just try to try out this build system on one of my projects and see how it goes. Uh, is using this kind of approach in his project. Cool, so that means I'm not the only one who thought that it's a good idea. Or you can just have a single compilation unit, Pokchomp. Uh, probably you can have a single compilation unit, but the, the thing is, uh, I have several executables, right? So uh, the part of the project, actually the whole tool chain. So we need to build the whole tool chain. So at, we have to have at least a compilation unit for each individual executable. This is the first thing. Second thing, uh, part of the build process is using the tool chain to build examples because we're developing a virtual machine, right? And we need to build uh, the bytecode of the examples to run them and whatnot. So our entire build process actually consists of two phases. First, building the tool chain and then using that tool chain, build the examples. So that already requires more sophisticated uh, process than just, you know, smashing everything into a single file and compiling it. Right, it would be ideal, I do agree with you, but we kind of doing like a slightly different project here, unfortunately. So, and on top of that, we also have an uh, integration uh, testing system, uh, which then uh, uses the tool chain to um, record the behavior of the program it compiled and then uh, compare that behavior with the expected behavior to make sure that we didn't break the virtual machine so and all of that requires like sophisticated tool with sophisticated logic not really that sophisticated but I mean um, you, you want to use a proper programming language for developing this kind of logic so you know what I mean it would be kind of cool if we had like a Turing complete proper language for build system and CMake is one of these things, but I already explained why I don't like CMake. So uh, yeah, so I decided to give it a try and just as a research, uh, try to use this approach for virtual machine. Uh, CMake don't like her. Well, CMake sounds like a complete overkill for this project. Uh, this project doesn't depend on anything. Uh, except libc. Seriously. <laughs> Imagine having a project that literally has zero dependencies and using CMake to build that project. Like, it, I think this is insanity. Like, you're adding additional maintenance cost for nothing. I would understand if you had some sort of a big library that you had to depend on and maybe several libraries that you have to then search on different systems and bring together and stuff. Like, I would understand that. But in this project, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, in the context of the bosom, it doesn't make, it make sense. So in, it's actually very easy in the, context of, in the context of bosom. So we can use this project to sort of bootstrap the build system. And once build system can build something as simple as bosom, it will be uh, possible to extend it to build more sophisticated projects that include dependency and then even more sophisticated project and so on and so forth i think that's that such build system should be uh, started to do uh, to be developed in projects like bosom where you have no dependencies uh so yeah that's basically the idea that's basically the idea and essentially how i want want this system to look like uh so you have a build c right and the first thing you do is just do gcc of that build c uh creating the executable so build uh, well, let's call it XZ because unfortunately the word build is already taken by the build folder. So it's going to be GCC build. You do something like that and then you execute build.xz and it just builds everything and does everything for you. And within that build script, what do you have? Uh, you would simply include a special library, a special header only library that brings uh, like uh, all of the power of the build tool to you. Um, omg.xz works on Linux. Well, I can, I can actually show you something cool. You want to see something super cool? Uh, I can even call it your mom, right? So, uh, of course, there is no, uh, you know, build.sh. Uh, not sh, but I mean h. So I'm going to remove that and uh, build your mom. And look at that. There is an executable build.yourmom and you can call build your mom. So can your Windows do that, by the way? 
So, I didn't think so. Hmm. It can't. Hello, cool wizard. Mm. All right, so we have a cup of tea. Uh, and uh, all right, so I already researched um, different ways on how to implement this entire thing. Uh, we did that on the call yesterday on the Discord. So I kind of know a little bit what I'm doing. So I'm a little bit prepared on how to develop things. So I'm going to develop this thing from scratch just to, uh, you know, let you know the whole context of the development of this entire thing. Uh, all right. So let me start uh, by opening build.c and let's explore uh, how I want uh, this thing to be used, right? So essentially, I'm going to open build sh, and what we need to do here, uh, we need to, uh, like, basically imagine that we have this library implemented for us. We have this thingy uh, implemented right here. So it's going to be build.sh, and it brings uh, all sorts of different tools for us to implement this entire logic. So the first thing we want to do in here, we want to create the corresponding folders, right? Uh, we want to create the corresponding folders. So basically, I want to be able to just do make dir, uh, right, build slash bin, right? So this is what I want to be able to do. So this is quite important. Uh, I'm actually sick of using Windows XP, wouldn't mind. Okay. So, and here's the thing. Um, uh, the path separators. Oh, did they, did they include the sage? I'm sorry. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, so the path separators are actually platform dependent. So uh, we want to have a, some sort of a, like a special thing that constructs the path for us in a cross-platform way. And uh, all of these functions are going to be part of the build.h. So we don't know how they implement it or anything like that. I just want to be able to do this kind of thing, like make dir uh, and also construct path however I want. I want to be able to do full bar buzz and it just like constructs the path in a cross-platform way. Uh, so, and of course, uh, make dear usually on many platforms um, doesn't create the folder if the previous folder already exists. And so on uh, Linux, it's usually minus P, you put a minus P flag and it creates all of the folder in that particular path. So um, I think in our case, it's going to mean like something like make dears and basically will create all of the directories in this particular path. Okay, Shay, hello. Yeah, 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 so it's uh, implementation of an old idea. I think we even discussed it with you at some point on your stream uh, in the chat. I kind of vaguely remember that we had a discussion about this. But I finally got around to implement that and I finally got a perfect project for uh, testing it out. So, yeah. Choose, by the way. Hmm. Kashi, tell me, why the fuck you're not a VIP? Okay, let's continue. So, uh, let me now do the following thing. So, we need to create at least two folders in here, like bin and uh, examples, right? So, we need to create an examples. Uh, cool. So, after we create all of these folders, right, right, it's it's up to these functions to actually, like, figure out everything, how to properly do that on different platforms. And also, I want the entire build system uh, to... Um, to log everything it does so you can uh, you know know what exactly is going on uh, so the next thing I want to be able to do I want to be able to just call an arbitrary command right something like uh, CMD right uh, and then I should be able to provide some sort of like flags uh, then O uh, and since this is a path right on different platforms it's going to have different uh, separators, right, is going to have different separators, so it has to be constructed with path. Uh, so let me do it like that. Right, it's going to be a uh, path. Mm. Ah. All right. So, and here comes another path. So we're grabbing the value from uh, src 
and then we do something like bosom.c uh, and then we put libs in here but I don't think libs yeah we, we don't really use libs here so I'm gonna just put it like that and c flag could be defined as a macro here all right you could define it like uh, define c flags and then grab this entire stuff grab all of these uh, flags and separate them uh, with commas so essentially once you put it here it will expand into the arguments and it will just consume everything and yeah it's up to the build tool to uh, run it properly wait for the child process also log everything so the only thing you have to be able to do you just have to be able to do this kind of thing right um, uh, cool but we don't have a single executable here right as I already mentioned we don't have a single executable we have several of them so we want to be able to iterate over them um, yeah we can always organize uh, some sort of array right so const char uh, toolchain so this is gonna be called a toolchain and we are going to put all of these tools there so first we need to build bosom then BME a BMR. Bosom is the assembly for the virtual machine. BME is a virtual machine emulator. BMR is the recorder. We use uh, this tool to record the output of the programs uh, that are run on the virtual machine and then compare these outputs to the expected ones. We use it on the, for continuous integration. Uh, so then we need a disassembler, uh, the Bosom. Uh, then we have a debugger, uh, so uh, GDB style debugger. And we also have a translator that takes uh, BASM and translates it to NASM uh, x86-64 for Linux, uh, using Linux syscalls and stuff like that. So this is the tool chain that we need to build here. So um, basically what I want to be able to do, I want to have a special macro that lets me uh, do for each on the elements of the array. So something like for each array uh, tool, uh, then tool chain and then I can construct a body and this is the body that is going to be repeated uh, for each individual tool in here and so then I can do something like uh, let's put it this way this is a tool and then um, I need to add like a C extension here you see I need to add a C extension so we need uh, also a special thing that concatenates the tool name with a dot C. You see, I'm trying to simplify working with the strings here as much as possible because working uh, with strings in uh, pure C is a pure pain, right? Uh, so, and here's the thing, um, I'm designing this thing so I can leak a lot of memory, right? So all these things, they will just malloc memory and never free it uh, because uh, this is a patch program. So it's gonna do its job and then it's gonna die. Right, so it doesn't need to like maintain proper uh, memory or anything because it's not going to run for several hours like a game, right? So it doesn't need to manage memory that uh, extensively as a game, for example. So I think this is a perfect example when we can just let it leak. We can just let it leak. I think it's um, I think it's a perfect example, good example. Uh, anyway, so uh, this entire thing should uh, like build all of the tool chain. It should build all of the toolchain and once we build all of the, the toolchain we have to use that toolchain to uh, build the examples right the examples are uh, located in the examples folder right so we need to take each individual bosom file right uh, we're taking each individual bosom file and we're using bosom executable that we just build to turn it into the bytecode so you see the, the, this is the second phase um, so um, I think our build system should also support a special for each uh, for each file in directory right so and you can do something like example and uh, examples so this is the name of the folder and you can iterate each file within that folder quite easily with a special macro you don't have to think about it so uh, let's quickly do that so what I'm doing right now I'm just ex like outlining the interface that I want from the tool right I'm outlining the interface that I want from the tool uh, so and uh, here's the thing so example is supposed to be a string so what I want to do here is essentially take that example I wish Emacs would understand this kind of this kind of macros unfortunately it is incapable of understanding them it tries to indent them too much 
um, for some reason. Maybe, what if I like use C++ mode? Would it be easier? No, no, and even in C++ mode, it doesn't understand that. It's just insane. Uh, but anyway, so uh, here's the thing. I want to take this thing plus str len of the example. So essentially, uh, I have a pointer to the beginning of the stream. I go to the uh, end of the string, actually next character after the end of the string, and I need to subtract four characters, right? And this entire thing should be equal to the extension. So this is how we can take the extension. But you have to be a little bit careful if this entire thing is like less uh, than four. So it's gonna be kind of dangerous to do that. Uh, why do you use macros instead of functions? Because in C you cannot uh, pass a block of code as an argument to a function. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, now, so maybe it makes sense to uh, actually save the size of the whole string like this. Uh, and then I'm gonna assert super quick uh, that n is greater or equal than 4. Mm, so, and then we're gonna put n, right? And so we, what we expect here, uh, we want this thing to be actually equal to bosom, right? And we're gonna ignore everything uh, else, right? So, and then here, uh, the way we build them is we're calling uh, cmd path build bin uh, bosom so then we have to provide the minus g flag uh, then we have to do concat uh, example dot bosom we don't really need to concat because example already contains the extension okay so we don't have to worry about that uh, and then the output has to be path uh, build uh, concat example and we can concatenate it with the extension bm cool so that's it actually we can even split this thing like that so this is what is needed right now uh this is what is needed right now to build the whole bm so and this is exactly what we're going to implement for now uh, so then build files will be called uh, .bosom.bm, yes. Uh, okay, so here is like a simple outline what we want from the, uh, from the build tool. And the only thing we need to do now is to implement all of that. And uh, the idea is that they should be simple and readable as this. Right, so we will try to maintain it like that. Uh, right, and on different platforms, uh, they're gonna have different implementations, right? Uh, if you're on Linux, it's gonna do it the Linux way. If you're on Windows, it probably will use WinAPI or something like that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, okay. So, do I have a build.h? Uh, so, I'm gonna actually save it. Uh, and if we try to build this entire thing, right, so I'm gonna actually do gcco build.exe build.c, uh, it's not gonna work because, for example, you don't have make dears, right? So, and this is probably something that we should start with. What's up, Ronak? Welcome to the stream. Um, so I'm gonna comment out everything that is not compilable right now. Uh, and we're gonna try to make this entire thing compilable one construction at a time, right? So we're gonna start with make dears and path, right? So right now we don't ha uh, we have neither make dears uh, nor path. So maybe I'm gonna actually put this thing away and I'm gonna only start with path. Right, so path is supposed to take a very adic amount of arguments. Let's actually start with something longer. For, for full bar buzz test. Uh, and on, depending on the platform, it's just going to be like a path uh, separated with different uh, path separators. So we don't have uh, this thing. Let me do stdio. Might as well actually put it in build edge because we definitely will need it there. Uh, all right, so what's going to be the path? <clears throat> so path could be a variadic function, right? 
It could be a very addy function. Uh, so let me see how we can implement that. Path, uh, it's gonna be a big one though, right? Something like this. But what's interesting is that uh, according to how you work with variadic functions in C, variadic uh, functions, variadic functions. So what you have to do, you have to call uh, VA start. And VA start, as far as I know, accepts a parameter. So a parameter is declared with a register storage class specifier, the array of function. Uh, not compatible yeah so basically for variadic functions in c uh for variadic functions in c you need a first uh, argument right so you need a first argument and this is pretty much impossible to um avoid right so uh okay we can have some sort of like a stupid argument maybe like a uh, account right and so that means you have to know the amount of arguments up front but it's really inconvenient uh, it's really inconvenient because you have to maintain the amount of arguments and if you uh, actually fuck up, right, um, you will troubleshoot this kind of problem for a very long time. So I think we're not going to use this as a count. Maybe it's going to be like a, a temporary dummy uh, argument that you can actually put to anything. Uh, we have a raid from RW Grimm. Hello, hello, uh, welcome raiders. We're developing a build system in C. Uh, you guys want to see how it's supposed to look like? This is how it's supposed to look like, by the way. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, essentially you build this program and it acts like a, not really shell script, but it's a build system. Um, <clears throat> why not Manson, uh, Mason? Because it's an overkill for what we do. Um, all right. So and also it, and also it's fun to develop your own things. Is Mason by the, by the way based on Python? That's double no, right? Seriously, that's a straight up double no. Nothing wrong with Python, by the way. It's just against what we're trying to achieve here. And I already explained what we're trying to achieve here at the beginning of the stream. Really sorry, uh, everyone has missed that. So, uh, so yeah. We're kind of trying to do the opposite thing. We're trying to get rid of the dependencies, right? Uh, not bring more, right? That's why uh, we're doing this kind of thing. So ideally, uh, our goal is to build the whole project using only C compiler. You should be able to just have a C compiler and that should be enough to build the project. You won't need uh, Python, you will need a build system written in Python, you won't need shell, you won't need CMD, you won't need uh, PowerShell, you won't need uh, Perl, you won't need anything at all, only C compiler. That's the point. Uh, right, so we're trying to go in the opposite direction, right? We're not trying to introduce dependencies, we're trying to reduce them. That's why we're not using them. So again, nothing wrong with Python or anything, it's just not what we're trying to do right now. Um, okay. So, in my opinion, for, for this specific project, C compiler should be enough to build everything, and I think it is feasible, because the project is not that big anyway, so... Mm -mm. Uh, okay, so uh, essentially, yeah, yeah, so, but if the first argument, uh, uh, if the first argument is uh, something dummy, right, that we're gonna ignore, uh, how do we know the end of this argument because if you work with variadic arguments right if you work with variadic arguments uh you need some sort of an indication uh of the end of the arguments because at compile time it will never tell you right because it's not known at compile time that's kind of the point um it's not known at compile time so usually there is a trick you either use a count thing or uh you pass um, and a list of pointers, so uh, something like with, with exec vp, right? So if you have exec vp, uh, exec vp, well, uh, I mean, generally the whole family of exec, exec functions, they accept uh, variadic arguments, but to indicate that you're done with uh, like listing arguments, you put a null there, right? You put a null there. So uh, this is something that we can do. So that means uh, that instead of just doing something like this, right, where you could just do build uh, bin, 
you would be forced to do something like 69 uh, build bin, which basically just ignore this thing, bin and null. And if you forget to put any of these two things at the edges of your um, of your call, uh, you're pretty much screwed. Uh, but I think we can actually simplify that. What if we wrap this function call into a macro? So let's actually call it path impl and then have a special macro, a special variadic macro. Uh, so it's going to be path and it just accepts variadic arguments. So the variadic macros, by the way, are slightly different. See, uh, variadic macros. Mm, see variadic macros. So essentially, you can just take the arguments of the variadic macros and you just can pass them like that. And on, on top of that, you can pass something after them. So that means you can do something like this path implementation, just 69, then uh, VA args, and then null. So that way, you never have to worry about this garbage in the begin on and the end of the arguments. You can just always call. Uh, build uh, bin and it will just work uh, it will just work so this is basically the pattern that I discovered yesterday and it's actually a pretty cool pattern I never realized that you can do that in C so that's pretty cool and this is basically what we need to implement here so um, yeah we need to iterate through all of the arguments and concatenate them uh with uh the uh the path separator right that's what we need to do here and um this function definitely will uh allocate memory right it will just allocate the buffer that can contain the whole path and it will just leak it right because it's a build tool uh it's not supposed to be running for a long time so it just needs to you know it's it's a batch program right so just let it leak and when the program exits the operating system will uh, delegate all the memory you don't have to worry about that so and we need to potentially think uh, for the future right uh maybe we'll build on a, on a system where there's not that much memory so we'll have to still manage the memory a little bit so the safest approach with memory management right now would be only to use malloc and not realloc right because when you use only malloc or calloc or something that just only allocates the memory but doesn't reallocate the memory right uh, that way you can easily substitute this malloc calls with uh like a region-based allocation, uh, which is then easy to integrate to the system, which uh, which periodically cleans up its own memory as it goes, right? So uh, once we have like a region-based uh, memory allocation, uh, you will be able to split your building into the phases, and for example, memory will be cleaned up after each big phase. So if we only use malloc, this kind of refactoring, this kind of refactoring is going to be very much trivial. So this is uh, one of the limitations I'm going to impose on myself while allocating memory. Apart from that limitation, I think I'm not going to care about memory manage management at all. Uh, does it make sense? Uh, hopefully it makes sense. So I'm just slightly, I, I don't like to think into the future because usually I don't really have that much information to design things properly upfront. But for this particular case, I think it's kind of important. Uh, does malloc work in Windows? Yes, malloc is a part of the standard of C and um, Microsoft Visual Studio tries to follow the standard. So, and uh, that means malloc does work on Windows. So, and what's interesting is that if you only use in libc, your program will be very cross-platform, seriously. It will work on Windows, it will work on Linux, it will work on FreeBSD, it will work on macOS, it will work on your mom's toaster. So, yeah, especially if your program in ANSI C, like a very old uh, version of C. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tuning channel. Cheers. So... Let's try to implement this thing. Um, <clears throat> so, let's go. Uh, what we need to do, first we need to figure out, uh, first we need to figure out um, how much memory we need to allocate, right? How much memory we need to allocate. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know anything about variadic arguments up front, right? We don't know anything about variadic arguments up front. Uh, so we need to first iterate through all of the variadic arguments, uh, figure out the sizes, 
accumulate all of the sizes of all of the strings, then allocate the memory, and then iterate uh, through variadic arguments one more time. So luckily, C allows us to iterate over a variadic arguments how many times we want, uh, so which is which is very convenient in our case. So let's actually start. Uh, let me take a look at the uh, variadic example. Here is the variadic example. So let me put it somewhere here. So I'm going to put it like that, and uh, let's start. So we need to first uh, define this variable and do a start. So this function accepts the uh, VA list which is going to be used to, to iterate over variadic arguments and the parameter of the function um, after which after which the variadic arguments start. So this is how it figure out, figures out how to like where to search for them because I would imagine that they're located on the stack and by knowing the uh, argument after which they start it knows where in the stack these uh, variadic arguments are uh, located so which does make sense to me. All right so another interesting thing is that we know we need to know their type but the convention for this function is that you only have to uh, provide the uh, the const char star basically sisters and sister stands for c string right so uh, let's do the following thing so it's going to be const uh, const char and it's going to be arg um, va arg and here is the type that we're trying to extract here um, all right, so, and by the way, after you're done with, uh, like, working with the arguments, all right, you, you have to do VA end. And by the way, you cannot start iterating over the arguments yet again if you didn't call VA end. So first you have to sort of declare, okay, I'm done iterating over variadic arguments, uh, and then you can do the start yet again and start iterating yet again. So there's going to be like a two iteration process. Right. Um, and by the way, throughout the implementation, we'll notice that uh, this pattern of iterating variadic arguments twice is going to be pretty much prevalent in all of these things. So we probably will extract that into some sort of a macro to simplify the uh, the process, if that makes any sense. Uh, all right, so what we need to do here is while arg not equal null, all right, while it's not equal null, we're going to keep uh, doing this kind of thing. Uh, we're going to keep iterating through the arguments. Right. Whew. All right, so we also need to figure out the, uh, the whole size, uh, like the sum of the sizes of all of the strings, right? Because without knowing this entire uh, length of the path, uh, we can't allocate enough memory, right? We can't allocate enough memory. So initially it's gonna be zero. And now every time we iterate through the argument, it's gonna be length plus str len uh, rg, right? Uh, and we know the sum of all of the lengths of all of the arguments here. So we kind of know um, how much memory to allocate. Right, we, we kind of know how to much memory allocate, but we do not include the uh, path separators, right? We do not include path separators. So we also need to count those, right? So I'm gonna have something like seps, uh, initially it's zero, and it's gonna be seps uh, plus one, right? So basically you have a one line separator per path component which is not necessarily true, right? You usually have actually uh, minus one, right? Because if you have full bar buzz uh, path separators, right? So you have two path separators. So one of the things you can do here is basically after you're done iterating, you can do uh, minus one to bring it down, or you can actually start with minus one here. So <laughs> yeah, so uh, astrophysicist actually, <laughs> came up with a pretty cool idea so we can actually start with minus one and you're gonna end up with minus one I mean, uh, so that's pretty convenient not gonna lie all right so now you know the length uh, why don't you use do while instead uh, I could use do while but uh, you can end uh, right here so what if you didn't provide any arguments you need to actually finish here so how do you express that with, with do while um, with do while is going to be kind of difficult to express, I think. Or maybe not. Anyway, so uh, what's interesting is that I think we can um, we can actually use for loop here. So because it kind of matches the for loop uh, paradigm where you have initialization, then the condition, and then the next iteration. 
right so it's gonna be like this so now we have a for loop right so you start with the first one then check condition and that uh, then now you have only this stuff in the in the, in the body which is quite convenient all right so uh, size t is unsigned oh okay so uh well, yeah, that's not convenient then. So that, that means we can just do something like this. Seps minus one then. Um, all right. Uh, so maybe, maybe I can use this size. All right. Uh, bike shading stream. Um, okay. Mm. After that, uh, what we want to try to achieve? We want to allocate enough memory for like everything. So assert um, so I want to assert one of the things right so for example that length is uh, at least greater than zero so we have something to allocate um, uh, so just in case uh, I'm not sure if it's that important Hello, Jim Poof. Welcome to the stream. Um, hello, hello. So uh, now uh, we have a sort, and uh, now the time has come to allocate this entire thing. So we're going to allocate length, then plus amount of separator. Um, so maybe uh, we're also going to have something like Esther Len. Yeah, so essentially it would be nice to have a path separator, path separator as a macro, separator as a macro. So um, you're gonna have a slash in here. Something, wait a second, something strange. Um, Basically, uh, we're not gonna try to. Uh, we're not gonna try to um, assume the sizes or anything, right? Uh, path separator. So it would be like kind of easier to have a path separator length separator length, and it's gonna be just size of the path separator. And maybe something like minus one. When you do a size of on a string literal, right? When you do a, a size of on a string literal, what, what usually happens? Uh, what usually happens? Um, so let me try the following thing. It's gonna be D uh, size of uh, this. And let's see what's gonna happen, right? So it's gonna be that. Uh, print F, yeah, we need to include that print F thingy there, but I don't want to make it compilable. Oh, for fuck's sake. So it's going to be STDIO. Alright. Mm, build XZ. So it's going to be two. Okay, so it does include the uh, null terminator. Alright. So it does include the null terminator. Uh, so that means we need to do minus one. Okay, so separator length. So, and when we allocate in the memory, I'm gonna use a path uh, separator length, right? 
and also I'm gonna do plus one uh, for the null terminator, right? Because they are gonna be null terminated strings. Uh, so, and uh, here we're gonna have a result. So this is the result. Uh, Alright, so we allocated enough memory. We allocated enough memory and now we can start accumulating everything. Uh, so here I'm gonna also return this uh, result here. So uh, let's do the iteration one more time. Mm -hmm. All right. My neighbors fucking burned something while cooking. Holy shit. Oh, it's impossible to fucking be here. Uh, all right, I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, it's just, I can literally smell everything that neighbors are doing. It's horrible. They also smoke a lot. Um, all right. So uh, here is an argument. Uh, here is an argument, and um, this argument we're gonna just append it to the result. But we also need to keep track of where exactly we are appending it, right? We also need to keep track of where exactly we are appending it. So and um, since we already like used the length for the allocation, uh, we don't really need that length anymore. So the idea is gonna be the following. Uh, we're gonna start with, like, with zero, we're gonna reset it to zero, and we're gonna use that length of indication where to um, where we need to append things. So it's gonna be something like uh, mem copy uh, result plus length, result plus length, uh, arg, and then size, uh, actually strlen of the arg. Right, and then we have to add uh, strlen of arg to the length, like this. So this is how we're gonna append this entire stuff. But maybe it also makes sense to actually extract this entire thing to like n, so it's a little bit easier to work with. And uh, after that, um, yeah, after that we're gonna append uh, everything else. And about hello, welcome to the stream. Yes, size of uh, nyan will be five because it includes multimeter, right? So I, uh, I assume size of literal returns how much memory you need to store that string. So, yeah. Um, because it's a different type. But string literals have the type of const char. Or do they? Oh, string leader is actually const char array. I see. So that makes sense. Uh, all right. So after that, we need to add. Uh, we need to end the line separator. So it's going to be mem copy result uh, length and uh, actually plus length, and we need to add uh, path separator. Se separator. Uh, path separator and the amount of things we have to copy is a path separator length right and after that we have to append uh, like uh, increase this by a path separator length okay here's an interesting thing we have to actually uh, append it at the end but not for the last argument not for the last argument so we need to know when we are at the last argument so we already have uh, a seps count Right, so we can use it to indicate when we shouldn't add the path separator. So look, if seps uh, equal uh, greater than zero, then you add the separator at the end and you decrement seps by one. So essentially you consume the separators. Uh, and after that, you concatenate it, uh, the path, uh, going into a path separator, which is quite cool. Uh, all right, so let's give it a try. Mm, so uh, so we didn't compile because we need to include std arc as far as I know std arc dot h uh, strlen so we need to include the string string dot h uh, assert let's also include assert anything else malloc uh, I think this requires std lib 
think this requires... And there we go! Look at that! It did it! It actually, uh, you know, concatenated everything accordingly. So if you are on Windows, uh, this thing is going to be defined like this. So we have a different separator. If you're on some operating system that uses like multi-character multi separators, you're going to have it like that. So, and uh, yeah, now you can, if you want to like uh, concatenate the paths, uh, just like this and without worrying about like specific platform uh, path separators, you will just do it like that. And the build system should figure out that for you. So, uh, you see, it should figure that out for you. Uh, all right, so it's going to be slash, and uh, yeah, for now, for, for Linux, it's going to be just slash. But uh, then uh, at compile time, it can be substituted with anything, and it will just work fine. All right, so here is another thing. So uh, we need to now make make dears work. Right, we need to make make deer work. Make deers work. So let's define this uh, thingy in uh, build.h. So it's going to be something like make deers, and it will accept the path. Right. It will accept the path. And uh, let me see, let me see. And uh, here's the thing. So we do have make deer on Linux. Uh, it's actually a function, right? Uh, make deer two. Cool. So, but the thing is, um, if you're trying to create something like uh, build bin and build is not created, right, and build is not created, um, you won't be able to create bin. So essentially you need to parse this path, you need to parse this path and uh, create each individual thing separately. You know what I mean? Uh, you need to create each individual thing separately. So it's not particularly convenient to parse them from the string, um, right? And especially kind of like sounds stupid that we just concatenated everything and now we need to split everything. Um, unless we don't actually, maybe we can uh, come up with something more interesting. For example, we have a path and then we search for the next path separator, we put zero there and just create that uh, path then we'll put zero on the next one create that path and so on and so forth so that could be actually kind of kind of cool <clears throat> so uh but maybe 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 no uh, all right all right all right so let me see mm, yeah something like that could be cool but maybe also sophisticated so too much sophisticated mm. So, hmm. all right. So let, let's just uh, let's just implement that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we gonna just uh, create a new uh, bunch of memory. So it's gonna be a sterlen path. Uh, Plus one, right? So we also need to take into account the uh, null terminator, right? And uh, it's going to be called not really path, but... Uh, so how should I call it? I really want to um, copy it. I really want to copy this string um, because I want to be uh, modifying it. So this thing can assume that it's not modifiable, but we will need to modify it anyway. So, and I need to come up with a name for it. So if this is called path, this is path iterator. What's called path iterator? Path iterator. Mm -hmm. uh, path iterator. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm gonna do mem copy path iterator and I'm copy this entire thing and uh, let's do something like path length, path len, right? Path len, path len, uh, path len, and then in the path iterator, the last thing here is going to be uh, the null terminator, right? So we're gonna put the null terminator like this. Cool. Nice, 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 nice. Um, so I need a way to find the next. 
to find the next uh, separator. You know, I have a better idea. I think it's too complicated. I think I'm gonna go with my original idea that uh, instead of uh, like doing it like that, uh, make dears is also gonna be a, a macro and it will accept the path arguments like that. I think it's gonna be like way easier to implement. Right, so it's gonna be make dears and it will just iterate through each individual argument here um, and then keep uh, appending the uh, the path keep appending the path and then keep creating folders uh, like each individual one right and it's gonna be kind of similar to a path thingy here uh, but it's gonna also automatically create folders uh, as it goes right so and uh, because of that it's gonna be just make dear uh, make dear c uh, make dears implementation 69 we args uh, no, so it's gonna be like an absolutely similar thing So and here it could be something like ignore and uh, This stuff so and now we need to repeat this entire uh, Thing in here, right? We need to repeat this entire thing. So what I'm thinking uh, What I'm thinking is maybe I need to uh, extract that to um, To some sort of Macro right so let's introduce something like for each uh, VA args, VA arg, maybe VA args. So, and this uh, will accept the name of a single argument, the argument list, uh, the argument list, and the body, right? And it's gonna um, accept the body. Alrighty, so, um, yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna do do while. Uh, so, it's gonna be do while. So if you never heard about do while, do we have a like a do while? We don't even have do while ma uh, like command because people will definitely ask what the fuck is this, and I'm kind of tired explaining it over and over again. C uh, macro do while. Uh, all right. So so is that a duplicate? What's the use of do while? Was already <laughs> yeah it's people are dealing with this uh, like even on stack overflow people keep duplicating this question over and over again um okay so i think i'm gonna just you know give the link to here so add cmd do while right so chat if somebody asks uh Zuzin, what the fuck is do while just use a regular thingy here Zuzin, you're dumb you don't know see just do uh, uh, like uh, invoke command do while and just explain uh people what the fuck is this stuff because it's a, a really well-known uh c meta right and i keep I'm just tired explaining it over and over again in these streams mm. all right <clears throat> So, uh, do while, and do while we're gonna uh, do this thing. I'm just gonna literally copy paste this entire stuff. Um, thank you, this is useful. Really? You unironically find it useful? Just arrived, what's that do while thing? No, you didn't just arrive, but I saw you before, alright? So don't try to troll me. Uh, okay, and also, I remember how. I think I explained you, or I, I know for sure you know about this method. Okay, so you're not gonna trick me. Uh, so let's continue. Um, oh shit! Mm, cool. So this is what we're gonna do here, and I think not debated. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe you will be lucky next time. Maybe you will finally debate me at some point. Just arrive. What's that do while thing you? Get it. Uh, just yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, all right. Uh, so essentially, I just extracted all of that to a separate. Uh, to a separate <laughs> macro. <laughs> Shut up, chat. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so instead of doing that, I can do uh, for each uh, VA args. So it's going to be arg args. And then I can just put uh, that in the body. <laughs> uh, like this. Uh, yeah. Look. Look how much simpler it looks now. Right. So you define VA args. 
right? And you just do for each arg in args, and it also finalizes uh, VA end. Uh, so after that, um, we can just get rid of this uh, VA end and just do it one more time. One more time. VA args, arg, args. And um, I, I think I, I can just do it like that. Um, Uh, yes, sir. so does it look simpler, right? I think it looks simpler, so you don't have all of this VA bullshit anymore, you just define the args and you just iterate through each uh, individual arg. Um, here we try to return before calling the end. Uh, I would imagine that on different compilers, different systems, it would like cause different behavior. As far as I know, maybe it's not... Well, okay, I can imagine what's, what's gonna happen. If the implementation of variadic arguments m mutates the stack every time you iterate over an argument, it's probably not going to end well because th there will be no like a return address on the stack and you're going to jump to a random shit or something. Did I guess it correctly? Uh, I, I think it basically depends on how exactly you implement this iteration over the variadic arguments. Mm, so, yeah. Yep, I was there before. Okay. I see. That makes sense. Um, Alright, so... It was a pain to debug. I can imagine. You, you you effectively corrupted your stack, right? You effectively corrupted your stack, and stack corruptions are a huge pain to debug, usually. Like, it's just nothing makes sense. Uh, Alrighty. So here's the path implementation, here is the make dears, and... Uh, yeah, this one is gonna be just impl. So, and... We kind of do a similar thing, actually. So we are just iterating it like that, just iterating it like that. And then for each thingy here, uh, yeah, essentially we don't even have to return anything if you think about it. So, um, but we can essentially, yeah, after that, um, let me think, we always have a 0 as plus 1, which means that I can simply do um, result length equal slash 0. Uh, not, not this slash 0, this slash 0. And just do make dear, right? Just do make dear. So it's going to be a result. And as far as I can remember, make dear yeah, it also accepts the mode. Does it accept the the permissions shit? Can I do something like 077755? I think I should be able to just do it like that. And also, what's going to be the result? Uh, returns uh, minus 1 if something uh, wrong happened. Okay, if this thing if this thing is less than 0, right, we, we have to do print f uh, std error, and it's going to be error uh, could not uh, create folder uh, directory. Uh, we're going to provide the directory name and also an explanation what exactly happened. So it's going to be a result. And um, so, yeah, str error, error null. So, and then uh, we're going to do exit one. Cool. So that's it. We might as well also do a little bit of a logging, right? Uh, something like printf uh, info directory uh, make dear uh, s and it's going to be just a result. Um, okay, cool. Why is integnor necessary as an argument? It's actually a very good question. Uh, so I assume that it's impossible to do it otherwise because VA, uh, VA start always assumes, uh, like accepts an argument after which the variadic arguments start. So if you don't have that argument, I suppose you won't be able to call VA start, but I might be not knowing something. So. So you tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, so if you have a better approach, please just let me know. Mm, Alright, so make dear and make dear will require... Uh, what? It will require this 
uh, stuff. It will require these kind of functions. So let's do build.h. Uh, right. And let's uh, go. So, uh, uh -huh. so it's going to be like this. Uh, error no. Yeah, we also need to include error no .h. Uh, okay. Couldn't create file exists. Okay. So it already tried to create that thing. Let's try to remove the uh, the build thingy, and I'm going to try to. Uh, there we go. And we managed to create nested folders several times. Isn't that Pog? I think it's got them fucking Pog. So, and what's funny is that we don't really want to fail if the folder already exists. I think it's not that good of an idea. So, can we detect that it failed because the folder already exists? Uh, so, make dear like two. Uh, let me see, let me see. Is it possible? Yeah, so essentially error now is going to be equal to e exist. Um, so if it already exists, I want to throw just a warning uh, instead of like failing completely. Right, you know what I mean? Um, so it's going to be build.h. Uh, so we're going to try to do this thing. Uh, so if error no equal e exist, uh, we're going to do just a warning. Right, so it's going to be std error, uh, but it's going to be warn, warn uh, directory already exists, but it's not going to crash the whole application. But if it's not due to that it exists, we're gonna uh, we're gonna crash. So I think this is a little bit better. Um... Mm, no se brisk minus minus 32 yes it's a, it's a yeah there we go so it says that that it already exists but if you remove this entire stuff right uh it will uh yeah it will first create it and on the second time it will throw warnings okay that's actually pretty cool so we'll already have some pretty epic functionality right you have you can have paths and you can also have all of this shit like just create folders and whatnot so yeah where is the build.c so we managed to make this line first line working so that kind of altered the way you have to create folders so now you have to create folders like that this is how we create them so the next thing we want to make working is for each array so for each array has nothing to do with the building functionality it's more of a like a, a classical macro for iterating arrays Mm. So let's put it this way: building, uh, building uh, the tool, right? So uh, what do we want to do? We want to make this uh, macro work uh, somehow. Uh, all right. So let me go here, and um, so we, we have a lot of macros here. So let's let's define them somewhere here. So item, items. Mm. Do we want to also have like a type of that thing? Do we want to also be able to specify the type? Maybe maybe it makes sense to specify the type. Let's actually like also accept the type. So that means here uh, you will have to do const char uh, like this, const char like this, and uh, yeah, I think it does make sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so items, and then you have a body. Cool. All right, so uh, this is going to be just a classical for each. Is it going to be a classical for each? It should be a classical for each, but I'm not. Yeah, let's let's wrap it in do in do while one more time. Uh, let's wrap it in do while one more time. Okay, so it's going to be four uh, size i uh, zero. Mm, so uh, i less than. Uh, size of items uh, divided by size of items zero. I think I also need to wrap it like this just in case it's an expression, but you know, uh, uh, array as an expression is already a little bit weird, but sure, uh, why not? Um, okay, so we have something like this. Might as well make it like slightly more readable, hopefully. Um, 
So something like this. So this is how we iterate over everything. Uh, all right. So after that, I can uh, define a type item, and it's going to be equal to items i, and then I invoke the body. Like in in the body, we do all of our dirty business in here. So that's pretty pog, I think. So that's going to be the for each element in the array implementation. So let me now try to run it, and there you go. So we. Uh, created all of the folders here and we managed to iterate through each individual element of the array right so uh, pretty straightforward so that's pretty cool next we need to make this work somehow right we already have path working but we don't have a concat working concat is like path but without um, without the separators right so let's actually start um, by implementing concat uh, so it's going to be something like building uh, s, right? But we're going to do uh, concat tool dot c. There we go. So uh, and concat by the way, by the way is also going to be very adequate. You will be able to concatenate as many uh, strings as you want. So it's going to be a very convenient thing to use. Uh, all right. So let's implement it super quick. Um, so we have to define concat, uh, then concat impl 69 vars uh, null, and let's do a concat uh, implementation. Let's do a concat implementation. So it's going to be con const char. Uh, it's getting really cold in here. Holy shit. What's the temperature in NoSabis? Can you use size of type instead of item zero? Uh, well, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Um, but there could be discrepancy. What there, if there is a discrepancy? It's getting warmer, but actually inside in here it's getting colder. Um, uh, you're welcome, Manasoyme. Shock. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think there's something wrong with my window frame because it, when it gets like to minus 40, it gets really cold in here. So, um, yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, concat impl. So this is going to be ignore, uh, and we're going to, uh, do it like this. Ignore. Uh, okay. So... We also need to um, accumulate all of the length stuff, right? We need to accumulate all of the length stuff. So we uh, list args, and it's going to be um, for each uh, va args. So this is going to be arg args, and then we're going to define the body, and in here we're going to just do length plus strlen arg. So we're going to just accumulate everything. Cool. Um, so let's allocate enough memory. So it's going to be length, but plus one, of course. So it's going to be result uh, and mem copy result and um, well, yeah, we need to iterate uh, the second time, right? We need to iterate the second time, but it's going to be similar. So we're going to start length with zero. Right, and uh, we're also going to maintain the n. Please do not indent. Please, please, for fuck's sake. Okay, it keeps indenting. It's so stupid. Mem cpy. Uh, so result plus length. Result plus length. Uh, we copy. Uh, we copy argument, and then n is the size of argument, and then we just add it here. And uh, after that, I can just return the result. There we go. So this is how we concatenate very adic amount of arguments using a single malloc, by the way. Uh, we iterate through each individual arg uh, argument in a very adic list, figure out the final size that we need, and then we just concatenate all of them together. And also, I think uh, I need to set something like this. Uh, I wonder if I didn't fuck up the zero null termination anywhere. Uh, okay, zero null termination here is okay. Um, Okay, so I think path impl... Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've fucked it up here. 
I definitely fucked it up here, so I forgot a very important thing here, that uh, at the end of this entire stuff I have to do something like uh, zero here, otherwise it's not gonna work, of course. Uh, apart from that, I think I think I didn't fuck it up. Uh, yeah, okay, concatenation seems to be working. Uh, and as you can see, it works, right? So bosm.c was achieved through concatenating these strings. Okay, so we, we have concatenation working. So the next thing we need to be able to achieve is CMD, right? We need to be able to run this CMD thing. So we basically have variadic arguments as um, arguments for exec VP, and we need to collect them into the array, um, and then just call or just fork the process and then do exec VP. So of course on Windows is going to be slightly different, uh, not slightly different, but completely different. Uh, but the idea is that on Windows, all of these functions are going to have uh, different implementations. So we're going to use a conditional compilation to separate uh, the platforms, right? So uh, we are not implementing everything simultaneously. First, I implement something that works on my machine and leave the room uh, for implementing uh, things that work on other machines, right? So we're not trying to implement everything at once. Mm, um, all right. So uh, let's continue. Uh, we need to implement this CMD. So following the convention, you see we basically have macros uh, and all of them start with capital letters. I think CMD should also uh, like be capital letters because it's definitely going to be a macro uh, with variadic arguments and whatnot. So yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So far so good. So far so good. The, the code looks like COBOL. <laughs> yes. The code looks like a cobble. Um, all right. Uh, and here I forgot the semicolon. And so I, I like the simplicity of usage, right? It's not particularly um, type safe or self-explanatory. Like you will probably need to read documentation on all of these macros, which is not ideal. I re usually don't like that. But um, uh, I don't really have much choice in PRC. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, so uh, let's continue. So this is for each. This is that, and um, okay. So let's define a macro CMD. Right. CMD is going to be like this, and of course, it's going to be CMD implementation. Sixty-nine VA args um, is going to be null. Okay. So, um, so and it's gonna accept int ignore and all of this stuff. Okay, so um, VA list args for each uh, VA arg. Ah, Emacs, like, do C mod developers even use their own mod for C development. <laughs> because this kind of issue hasn't been fixed for a while. I, I was trying to look into C mod or CC mod. It's so overly complicated. I think I understand why people don't touch it at all. Um, just use Visual Studio Code. Well, I mean, we're getting to the point where I'm gonna just use the Visual Studio Code just to write this kind of simple stuff because it feels like the developers of that mod like don't program in C. Um, all right. So essentially, what I want to do, I want to uh, count the um, the amount of components here. Yeah. Yes. I need to count the amount of components. So it's gonna be something like this: count zero, right? And every time we do this thing. Mm, one, two, three, four. So here's here's that. So now we know the amount of components here. What I want to uh, do, I want to allocate an array, right? I want to allocate an array um, for all of these components here. So you have to keep in mind what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to prepare everything for exec VP function. Uh, this one, right? So I'm preparing everything for this function. So this function will accept arguments and file. But what's interesting is that for a file, you can just use the first argument of RGV. So you don't really have to think much about it. So yeah, so what we're allocating, we are allocating size of const, uh, const char, 
multiplied by count, but we also need to allocate additional argument for the null because it's a null terminated array. Right, it's a null terminated array. Uh, all right, so and then we need to allocate something like uh, this. So I'm gonna call it R a R G V, argv. So this is how we're gonna call it. So this is argv. Um, right, and after that, I need to iterate this entire stuff one more time because yeah, I couldn't allocate this array without iterating th through the virtual arguments, right? Because it's like, uh, how is this called? Successive access. So there is a random access. And what's the opposite of random access? Sequential? Yeah, it's, it's, it has a sequential access, right? So the variadic argument list has a sequential access. That's why to know its size, I need to iterate it at least once. Luckily, we can iterate it as many times as we want. So, uh, yeah. For each of our args, arg args, right? And uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just do uh, arg v count. Uh, plus one. Wait a second! I have a cool idea. What if I call count not count but argc? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I think that's cool. Argc. So, and uh, I'm gonna just assign it like that. There we go. So now I have everything I need. Cool. So, yeah. Now, uh, I just need to fork the process, right? I just need to fork the process and uh, execute it. Uh, so as a matter of fact, I don't have to fork the process. I can do exec uh, vp, I think. Yeah, I can just do exec vp where I would do argv, z uh, argv zero, and then just argv, and that would work just fine, except we have to be super careful that uh, assert argc has to be greater or equal than one, otherwise, like, some of these assumptions here are not going to work, specifically this one. Uh, might as well, you know, put it here, just closer to where we make this kind of assumption. Uh, right, but the thing uh, is, you will be able to run only one command, right, because execvp doesn't uh, spawn a new process. What it does, it replaces the image of the current process with the image of another program, right? So basically, uh, the program will continue executing as a different program and you won't be able to go back. So once you execute that, you won't be able to go back at all. So that's why on Unixes you have to first fork the process, figure out where the, your child or parent, and if you're a child, you have to replace your own image and so on and so forth, you know, classical Unix way. In, on Windows, of course, it's going to be different. On Windows, I think you have a WinAPI Cisco, not Cisco, uh, WinAPI function called create process A or something like that, and uh, it creates a separate process. So I don't think it's that much of a hassle to do. Uh, anyways, so uh, fork, yeah. So we need to call this function. Is there any examples? Uh, yeah, example C pipe or wait. Okay, so let's take a look at the pipe. Uh, example, here we go. So this is what we use here. Okay, so here you fork. Then, by the way, if fork returns a child PID uh, equal to minus one, that means uh, fork failed and you have to report that properly. So, and then if uh, child PID equal to zero, that means you are the child because it uh, basically splits the processes, right? So the program uh, continues to execute, but that actually splits into two separate processes. So and you have to figure out whether you are child or whether you are parent, right? And the only way to do that is uh, uh, child PID for, for child is going to be uh, zero, right? Okay, so let's, let's quickly do that. So I'm going to just copy paste this code. Mm. Uh, so it's gonna be pid underscore t, and if something like this has happened, uh, I can do something like print f uh, error um, could not fork uh, a child process. So we can also uh, try to explain why. Uh, so it's gonna be else std error str error, uh, error no, right, it's going to put it like that, and we can also exit like one or whatnot. So yeah, if you if you fail to fork, uh, you have to die. Uh, okay, 
so now if you are a child right if you are a child what you have to do you just have to execute the uh, the thing just execute the program if you are a parent you just have to wait for the child right so that's it so this is how we wait for, for all the children uh that's it believe it or not that's pretty much it um should work you know what uh, i also want to be able to log the program that we are executing i think uh don't fork a child i'll try to uh, but i mean it's necessary to to execute the program on linux you have to fork a child um all right so i think i'm gonna mm, I'm going to... Yeah, I want to concatenate everything. Maybe the time has come to... Um, factor out things like concat and path. Yeah, the time has come to... Yeah, to do that. Because right now, I want to do like a path but I want to separate with spaces instead of um, separate with with spaces instead of uh, separators. So maybe the thing we have to do, we'll have to make, uh, create like a path, but more general, and we'll uh, define path in terms of that uh, in terms of that more general thing. Uh, yeah, I think that will be actually kind of cool. Uh, so I want to make a cup of tea, by the way, uh, because it's getting cold in here and I'm a little bit tired, so I need a little bit of that uh, caffeine boost, if you know what I mean, chat, if you know what I mean. So maybe somebody have uh, somebody has any questions about what we're doing or anything like that, feel free to ask the questions in the chat. So how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Mm. So what are we doing? We're creating a build system in C. So we're essentially trying to use C as the language for building C project, projects. I'm doing fine. Cool. Very glad to hear that. Uh, so that's good. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what's that do while thing? Very funny question. Um, Build C is back. Well, yes, it kind of is, but it's now it's called build.h. Warming up Siberia. Well, we do have a lot of forests in here. Forests in here. Mm. Um. So, I'm gonna go to the kitchen, uh, turn on my kettle, right, and then I'm gonna be back. Don't go anywhere, otherwise you're gonna miss the most interesting part of the development. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go super quick. I think I figured out why it was so cold in here. <laughs> this is because I opened the window in the kitchen. <laughs> ah. And the reason why I opened the window in the kitchen is because uh, there was like a burning smell from, from my neighbors because they burned something while cooking. So. And I forgot about that while I was actually uh, streaming. That's why it was so cold in here. That explains everything. Weird, is it not? Anyways, so yeah, open the window at minus 40, by the way. So welcome to, to Pipega streamer. 
Anyways, uh, what were they cooking? I didn't ask them. Like, um, you're so funny today, Hero Simples. My god. Anyway, uh, I want to abstract away something. It's a Celsius. It's mon minus 40 Celsius uh, in, the, in the Siberia right now. The, the bot shows, uh, I think, minus 32. Uh, right. No, the Siberia is Siberia. Uh, but it's actually minus 40, right? Um, yeah, I checked today. Mm, Alright. So what I want to do, I want to turn path into a more general thing. Um, so maybe we're going to have something like concat with separator. Um, so I'm going to re rename this to concat sep. And this is a, a concat sep, right? It accepts the separator. Um, so, and is it gonna accept the separator here? We might try to accept the separator here. And since we have a separator, by the way, uh, we don't need this ignore argument anymore. I think, I think that's cool. So, there you go. Mm. Mm. All right. So, this is a concat sep. Um... Lives in Russia for the year. There's no to open windows in win. I open windows in winter quite often, actually, because uh, we have a pretty strong central heating, uh, which dries the dries the air really like very much, and there's no way to turn it off sometimes, and it just gets really difficult to live here. So we need to sometimes open windows in here, even though it's minus forty. It is what it is. Welcome to Siberia. Uh thank you so much, Deck of Doom 12 for 27 months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic uh Siberian club. So yeah I'm gonna go uh pour myself some hot water. Um mm. Just a second, I think I forgot to check something. Um, forgot to check if I closed the window. Yes, yes. Very funny. Uh -huh. Can get separator, right? So here, um, I think I'm gonna comment down everything here. Uh, I'm going crazy. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Oh shit! I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I forgot to um, change this thing. Um, yeah, I forgot to provide the argument of after which it all starts. Right, so we start uh, accepts that argument some way here. So maybe I'm gonna actually accept this as a parameter here. So this is gonna be a param. Mm, new emotes. We have shit ton of new emotes, yes. Uh, where is bold? I replaced him. Wait a second, let me call him. Let me let me call him. Just a second. It's me! It's me again! Ah, ah. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Different person every time. <clears throat> so, 
Um... <laughs> can we just can, can we just program in C, please? Uh, all right. So, as you, as you know, guys, but there's actually two <laughs> two streamers. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake. Um. Uh. All right. Uh. Cool. Where's the hairy one? Well, I should. Uh. No. Okay, let's try to compile this shit. Maybe it will remind me what exactly I was trying to do. Uh, okay, so here we're gonna have ignore. Mm -hmm. So here's the path separator. All right. Um, I think this has to be a separator. Const char sep. And we also need const size t sep length. It's gonna be ester len sep. Right. Mm. Um, so separate your length, and maybe this one should be called seps count. All right, that makes a little bit more sense. Chair is back seating. God damn it. Uh, all right. So what do we have here? So we don't have ignore anymore, but we do have a sep. Mm -hmm. So, seps count. Uh -huh. So, this one seps count, and then we can do um, sep len and then plus one. Alright. So, and in here, yeah, we have to provide the sep. Uh huh, uh huh. Seps count. Mm hmm. Weather camera. Hmm. Are you from camera? Uh, For those who doesn't know, I'm actually originally from Novokuznetsk, so <laughs> I'm not really from Novosibirsk. A fake Novosibirian. Mm. But I mean, I'm from Siberia anyway, so see another Siberian, Siberian city. Siberia is huge, by the way, we have a lot of different cities here. So... Cheers. Um, alrighty. No friend of mine is sure friend of mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, alright friend of mine mm -hmm. so here's another thing so makes dear so this is ignore um, oh and this is another thing yeah since I copy pasted this entire stuff I'm gonna be duplicating it over and over again but maybe that's okay maybe that's okay so I'm gonna just do it count here Sips. Sips count. Chat! It's a miracle. I close the window and it starts to get warmer in here. <laughs> Who would have fucking thought? <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Um, so, sip length. Uh, Mm, sep length star str len I'm a, I'm a very smart person mm, so oh yeah wait a second. oh shit yeah I see I'm an idiot so yeah because of that I have to do that slightly differently so now we do have a path separator and Maybe I want to actually call it like this for the consistency, right? We're going to do that for the consistency. Mm -hmm. So this is a path sep len. 
and what we do here, we just use ignore in here. Is it gonna work now? Path count. Uh, ara, 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 ara. Ara, 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 separator. Uh huh. So it's gonna use something like this. Uh huh. Just remove that. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Hello, Ardagizek. I have no idea how to pronounce your nickname, but hello. What are you doing here? How did you find this secret stream? How did you manage to join a sub on this stream? Are you a hacker? This is a secret private stream. How did you join that? All right. So, uh, ignore. A hacker. We have a hacker in chat. What the fuck? Um, um, implicit declaration of fork. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny to me for some reason. So, uh, we need to include this shit for the fork, I think. But we do have uh, types already. It's okay, what's that? War. You have a nice sense of humor, mate. I really like it. Uh, okay, so we have a pretty cool situation. So um, the function call expects this, this type. Mm -hmm. And so then we have a wait. And if I take a look at the wait, we have to introduce this thing. So this is how much shit you need to import just to make it work on Linux. Can your Windows do that? Okay, so we don't have path anymore. So the thing is, right, path is going to be concat but with the separator. Mm. So concat with the separator. <sighs> Alrighty. So, and that's essentially what it's going to be. Uh, define path uh, boom 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 uh, concat sep um, path sep uh, va args you see so we're just forwarding it there so this is what we're gonna have here and i think it worked generally uh, now so the thing i want to do now is I want to be able to just log everything. But I can, can't easily just log everything, unfortunately. <sighs> or can I? I think I can. So I can do something like do while. Mm. Zozin, what is the do while? Why are you using do while in here? Zozin, are you dumb? Uh, 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 are you dumb? Just use the regular thing. Zozin, what is with do while? Ooh, do while. Uh, print f, um, and we're gonna do something like this. Uh, it's gonna be in for s. Um, it's gonna be concat sep, but for the separator, we're gonna just use a space and we're gonna just use va args like this. I think that's gonna be okay. All right, so this is how we're gonna log everything here. See, this is how we log everything. And you know what? Why don't I use the same approach for make dears? I think I should use the same approach for my gears and completely get rid of this bullshit like separator and whatnot. Uh, uh maybe not. Yeah, for my gears this has to be slightly, slightly different. <laughs> Alright, so uh did it work actually? Alright, so something Huh. Something was weird, but okay. Um, so did it actually execute anything? So 
uh, we do CP ID VP. Uh, I think I forgot uh, the following thing. So if this thing is less than zero, we have to crash as well. It's going to be fprintf. Uh, something like std error. Uh, it's going to be error. Could not uh, execute child process. Uh, it's going to be like this. It's going to be str error. Uh, error null. Is it going to work now? And also, of course, we have to exit with one to indicate that should be the fucky wacky. Uh, could not execute child process. No such file or directory. Oh, okay. So that explains it. So essentially, I think, yeah, I need to call the C compiler first, <laughs> right? So that's what I need to do. Uh, right, so that, that should make sense. There we go, we did it. Chat. This is the output uh, of this piece of code. Like, this is like a very small piece of code that just creates folders, iterates over an array, and just calls the compiler. And this is how it looks like. And uh, what it does, it creates the build folder. Within the build folder, it uh, puts uh, all of the execut executables that it builds. It calls to the, uh, to the compiler and everything, so yeah. And it's not as much as, for example, in, in Shell, right? So this is actually pretty straightforward and it works, I think. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, so we can try to remove a uh, build folder yet again, right? Uh, just rerun it, and it logs everything. So if you try to introduce some sort of a compilation error, um, I think uh, let's let's introduce it in BM, so it guarantees to fail like everywhere. And let's try to uh, rebuild it. So it actually, yeah, yeah. It's usable, you can easily jump to the errors as well. Uh, but interestingly enough... Interestingly enough... It doesn't stop the, uh, the build process. But the question is, should it actually stop the build process? Can we know what a child returned through a wait function? So we have wait. Uh, so we can do... Yeah, yeah, so essentially you can take a look at the status. Um, Alright, stop on the first error. Yeah, we're gonna implement that, but not now. Uh, but this is something to keep in mind. Um, uh, child fail is uh, not uh, properly reported. It is not properly reported. Alright, so that's cool. <clears throat> Uh, build.c, um, where is the build.c? Wait, here it is, why couldn't find it? Okay, so the next thing we need to do, we need to make this work, but it already works, right? So it already should create everything, uh, right? And then it tries to create the, um, the examples. So, and the next thing that is not going to work is for each file in directory, right? So it's similar uh, to for each array, for each element in the array, but this one will actually trade through the files in the directory. Mm, okay, so let's implement this uh, particular macro. Let's implement this particular macro. Mm, so what we're gonna have here, we're gonna have a, a file, then a dear path. So this is what we have here. We have dear path and just the body. Right, so just the body. So it's going to be do, um, and it's going to be slightly different. Right, so for Linux, uh, we're going to use durant, uh, durant example. Mm, okay, I already looked into durant at some point. Uh, yep, so this is a special interface that allows you to open a folder and iterate through the files in the folder which is quite convenient. So let's just use that. Mm. Mm. Might as well actually take this entire example and copy paste it. I think it's good. It's going to be okay. So the only thing we need here is this. Uh -huh. And I'm going to just copy paste it here. Mm. Copy pasting code from Stack Overflow, by the way. Classic, am I right? Mm. Copy-pasting code from Stack Overflow. Alright, so 
here we have to use deer path. Um, now, then we have while. Hmm. Mm, so we also have need to have DP, which is Durant Pointer. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, Durant Pointer. We're going to put it somewhere here. Mm, we can also initialize it with null. Mm -hmm. So then we open that. Uh, so I don't need full path in here I don't need any of this stuff uh, okay okay looks cool uh -huh. so this is how we do all of that and then uh, this is the file so it's gonna be const char file equal dp dname right and then i just do a body cool so this is how we achieve all of that uh yep that should work if i understand everything correctly mm. all right but we also need to include durant right Durand.h. So uh, for now, I'm not gonna call CMD. Uh, I'm gonna just test that. Uh, yeah, building s example. Mm. All right. So and let's see. Okay. So. Oh, assertion has failed. Oh, I see. I think I know uh, uh, what assertion failed on. Uh, I think it failed on dot and dot dot uh, things. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think another thing that we have to ignore here is um, strcmp, maybe something like example. Uh, not equal dot yeah so basically everything equal to dot should be also ignored completely uh, yep there we go uh, so we iterated through each individual file in the uh, example folder and we iterated only through the bosom files anyway so uh, and now uh, we can just try to build all these examples uh, so essentially we're gonna use previously built uh, bosom utility uh, and we're going to uh, put all of that into the build examples. Uh, so let's quickly try to do that. Uh, all right. So uh, something didn't really work. CMD, oh, because we don't have a CMD anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of, of these assumptions uh, were already changed as I was, um, you know, evolving this entire example. Yeah. So we're building uh, the tool chain and then uh, Fibasm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So because it only gives us the the file name the only th another thing you have to do is examples and then just join them together right we just have to join them together so we're building the stuff and there we go we just managed to build the whole virtual machine project with only c and it took us two hours by the way actually took more because i also had the research but uh apart from that yeah so there you go so um it works on linux of course but yeah and this is the entire uh, source code of the build tool right so you have these flags in here you have arrays and you have the, these tools that help you to uh, manage the stuff and uh, you can start to have conditional compilation um which is pretty cool mm. Does it work with Rust projects? Probably. I'm pretty sure you can call a Rust uh, compiler from within this thing. We can even try to do that. So imagine that you have a main RS. Uh, something like that is going to be print ln. 
hello uh, rust right and then you can have something like uh, build rust and uh, we're gonna have c right and you include uh, build dot h right so this is what you have here uh, might as well actually put it like this and essentially what you need to do you do you need to do cmd rust c uh, and uh, you want to build just main dot rs right so we just do that uh, right after that you build rust uh, i think uh, did i save this thing i think i didn't save it and build rust and then build rust and then you just call this entire thing and uh, as you can see it uh, runs this rust c it will take some time uh, because I, it needs to warm up some some caches and stuff like that and after that you should have main executable right so something like main and hello rust yeah i mean you can just call the rust you know compiler from uh, from c like that just the command rust c and there we go um and of course if you have a, a compilation error in here right so if we go the semicolon you try to run it one more time and did it actually swallow oh i see because you don't have to have a semicolon here all right so let's actually do something like this and everything works right and yeah there we go so it's a build tool in c so you can use it with rust if you want to it's just like you can use it instead of shell essentially so Make sense? Mm. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So it took us how many? 200 lines of code to make it work on Linux. Mm. Does it work on Windows? No, it doesn't work on Windows, but I mean, I started this project two hours ago, so we haven't implemented much. Um, all right. So let me see. So what's interesting is that how much Windows support do we need? We don't need to do anything special on Windows with Concat. Uh, we don't need to do anything special with Path on Windows either, unless uh, if, um, let's put it this way, if uh, Win32, then uh, it's going to be defined path sep like this. Uh, otherwise, like this and if uh, i think it's win32 if i'm not mistaken <clears throat> and the path separator length could be defined like this anyway um one two three four uh one two three four so already path on windows <clears throat> works uh we already have a windows support for paths i think this is how you do that i think uh something src something cpp uh msvc no there was like a windows yeah it's underscore windows 32. all right <clears throat> already cross platform yeah the paths already cross platform we didn't we don't have to do anything special here make deers uh with make deers i'm not quite sure uh, i think uh win 32 make deer uh most windows api also takes touch i know that all right mm -hmm. So the Microsoft implemented POSIX functions named MakeDeer is a deprecated alias to underscore MakeDeer. All right, so there's a little bit of, uh, yeah. So you just can use that uh, instead. You can just use that. Mm. And it would be okay. Uh, in case of an error, what does it return in case of an error? Um, so if it's problem creating test directory, does it set error? No. Uh, okay. Okay. So essentially on Windows, you just have to call, uh, you know, to a different make dear or something. Should be pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and this is something that could be implemented. Okay. Um, so to do. Uh, make deers, um, make deers, let's go, make, make deers does not work on Windows. And we're gonna just give the link to here, right? Okay, cool. 
concatenation, uh, nothing special. CMD. Okay, CMD is rather interesting. CMD is rather interesting. How can we implement that? Um, okay, Windows create process or something. Uh, is that how you create processes? Mm. Is there any pitfalls in using this function? Do we have any Windows developers who knows any, any pitfalls? Mm. Can I just, you know, call a separate program like this? Maybe. Mm. All right. Uh, Chat file is not probably reported on uh, Linux. Is it all ansicle? Okay, apart from that, anything else? Is that is that it? Is that the only pitfall in this thing? Um, exec, does it work on? Okay, Windows execl. Let's see. Oh shit! Honeymoons. Thank you so much. And oh shit! That's actually cool. Okay. Does it have exec VP? Uh, I feel it does have exec VP. All right. Uh, loads and execute new child process. But does it replace? The whole thing is a pitfall. Okay. Um, loads and execute a new process passing an array of pointers, command line arguments. Uh, what is the parameter? So does it work like on Linux where it substitutes the current process? But it says it executes new child process. So okay, so maybe we can just use this very scuffed POSIX layer of Windows to you know, like have support on Windows and that's gonna be fine. It's not a fork, it starts a new process. Okay, so this is something that we'll have to keep in mind. Thank you so much. Actually, it's, it's easier than I thought. All right. Uh, okay. Um, to do CMD does not work on uh, Windows. And we're going to just put this thing here. Cool. So this is something that has to be implemented. And it's not that difficult to implement. Right, so we just have to make 200 lines of code cross-platform. It's not as difficult to make 200 lines of code cross-platform. It's actually pretty easy. But once you make it cross-platform, uh, it's way easier to maintain it cross-platform over time. If you know what I mean. All right. Mm. <sighs> you put A. Oh, God damn it. Okay, happens to me every time. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So now let me test this stuff one more time. Okay, looks good. So I want to try another thing. I have a, uh, I have an extension for my build script uh, for x86.64, you see? Uh, right, so I build Basm to Nasm and I also uh, like call these additional things. W would it be possible for me to uh, facilitate this thing as well? Oh yeah, by the way, since I'm using C now, right, since I'm using C, I can split the phases into separate functions. I can do that. It's C. I can use everything I can use in C. So, for example, I can do build toolchain, right? I'm building the toolchain. And everything related to building the toolchain could be separated in, into this function, right? So here's the build toolchain. Uh, build toolchain. Cool. Then I can do build examples. Right, it's going to be void. And uh, I can move this entire stuff to, to build examples. There we go. Uh, yes, so I can have separate functions here. Uh, furthermore, um, for example, on Windows, um, on Windows, you're probably going to call uh, this thing differently. You're probably don't, not going to call to CC, you're going to call to CL. The flags are going to be completely different. Everything is going to be completely different. What you can do, you can abstract that away something like build c file right so uh you can have something like path uh maybe input path and then you can have something like output path output path 
Uh, and depending whether you are on uh, Linux or on Windows, this thing could be implemented differently, right? So uh, for, for Linux specifically, we can implement it like this. It's going to be CMD, uh, CC, C flat. I, I might as well actually, uh, you know, uh, copy paste this entire thing like that, of course. So, uh, so input path, mm, input path, input path. So the input path essentially is going to be uh, here, input path, and this is going to be the output path, uh, right, output path, and you can even do it like that, um, and then you can say build C file, so the input is this, right, and the output is this, right, you can remove this entire thing. Cool. So, uh, and then, if uh, Win32, Win32, you're gonna have a completely different implementation of this function. See what I mean? Uh, so, essentially, building tool chain uh, doesn't care about the compiler at all, because building C file on Windows is gonna be completely different. Uh, and uh, furthermore, there's C flags, and depending on whether you are on Windows, if Win32, uh, you're gonna have one thing, define C flags, uh, otherwise, uh, you're gonna have a different thing, right? So, um, I think on Windows you cannot call uh, directly sale, you call... Yes, so this is a... Uh, yeah, 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 it, it's true, but it's besides the point. <clears throat> Uh, we already require people to run our bad script from within the development environment of MSVC. I am aware of that. We already have documented that. This is a well-known thing. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so <clears throat> essentially, so C flex um, is going to be this thing, right? So we have a C flex. Uh, to be fair. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So let's, let's put it this way. Mm, so in here is gonna be like that. Uh, slashes are a little bit difficult in here, but I think we'll be able to pull that off. Uh, this one is gonna be something like this. Uh, do we even have... Uh, wait a second. Can we replace this thing? Yeah, so this is what we'll have to do here. Uh, and, yeah, okay, uh-huh, and then this is how we're gonna do that as well, so a C-flex. Mm -mm. This uh, build system is not on GitHub yet, I started this project two hours ago, give me a, a little bit of time, I'm gonna upload it on the GitHub, don't worry about it, I literally just started working on it. Um, all right, so and in here, so we have cl.exe, then we put c flags in here, if I'm not mistaken, like that, and then we just need to provide the input. Right, so that's it. We already made the build process a little bit more cross platform. We haven't tested it yet, but that's basically the rough idea how uh, the difference on Windows and on Linux will be. Right, so you have this conditional compilation. And this is a single script, by the way, that it works on both Windows and Linux. Like, it's cool, trust me. And uh, you can use functions to abstract everything away. It's the same language. It's the same language for all the platforms and shit. It's amazing. Um, all right. Um, so let me try to compile that. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, so it already compiles, could not execute child process, no such file or directory. Yeah, okay, uh, if uh, we have to swap them around, right, so, so this kind of errors are easy to actually catch. Okay, cool, nice, 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 everything works. Mm. So, yeah, 
So it's it uses Windows shit, but it's compilable on Linux as well because of these macros and stuff like that. So I think I want to try to start running it on Windows machine <clears throat> just to test um, how it will compile and work and whatnot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh shit. Um, all right. Uh, so I need to get rid of some garbage, I think. Uh, defined Windows, okay. Sure. Uh, we can also use def, right? So, win def. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think if defined and if def, it's just the same thing. So, build h, uh, yeah, win32. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think um, <clears throat> I'm going to start uh, doing continuous integration bullshit, my, my favorite kind of bullshit. Build.h. <clears throat> what I'm going to commit here, I'm going to commit this thing here. Um, and on Linux, I also want to start, actually, yeah, let, let's start with Linux, right, let's start with Linux. Um, it's going to be echo uh, like this, and then <clears throat> is it gonna work? I'm not, I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna do gcc o build dot uh, build dot c. All right, we're building this entire thing, and then we're calling this thing. We might as well actually, you know what? Uh, remove this entire stuff. Can I? Can I just do it like that? I think I can do it like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Introduce initial uh, impl implementation uh, of build.h. Okay, and let's push that right into the repo and let's see how it's going to work on continuous integration because that's kind of the point of this entire thing. Uh, we're not replacing build yet, we're just testing it out. We're just testing it out. GitHub is... And finally it showed the button. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, Alright, so let's see. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Okay, okay. So we're looking at the Linux GCC. Let me actually close all of this garbage. It's not needed anymore, at least for now. Maybe later it's going to be needed again. Okay, so it's installing some shite. Uh, Alright. I'm just waiting. Okay. Oh shit, it worked! So, it already built everything. Um, Alright, so it works. Uh, also, it's very, very blurry. Uh, probably because it uses like OpenGL canvas or something like that. Okay, so that's Pogue. Now, the most interesting part. So we know that all of that shit works on uh, Linux. What about Windows? So, on Windows, theoretically, uh, you should be able to just do clxe uh, uh, build.c, right? And I th don't think you need anything else. Like, it should be as simple as that. And then you should be able to call build.exe. And let's see what's going to happen. So, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not going to build properly. And this is exactly what I want. I want this thing to not build. Uh, because I want to see the compilation errors. Mm, okay run build c uh, build on uh, msvc okay uh, so what i need here is the compilation errors so we can start the classical process of pushing changes to the continuous integration looking at the errors and fixing them accordingly so and uh, maybe we'll get some interesting insights on how this entire shit works and then we, we're gonna fix it <laughs> So, uh, I'm gonna click on MSVC just to take a look at this thing. Uh, does it say that it's... That's really strange, okay. I think GitHub being GitHub yet again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, right in checkout.
Mm, counting objects, so it's doing... Alrighty, so I think we're doing the thing. Build all and examples. Okay. Now we're talking. Okay, that's cool. So it couldn't understand this shit because on in bat, right? In bat we use RAM as far as it all right. Uh, so yeah, this is how we commented out. On top of that, uh, it doesn't know where to find all of this bullshit, right? So uh, we need to now in build H uh, hide that away on Windows if. Uh, def win32 uh, we probably have to include the windows shed right include uh, windows shed .h. Uh, then otherwise uh, we include all the, all the linux shed uh, right uh, then and if uh, win32 there we go uh, and uh, let's figure out what's gonna be the windows shed I think windows shed is actually well known uh, and we do that on in something, right? So, uh, so Windows, yeah. So first you define Windows 32 lean and mean. Uh, whatever the fuck is that supposed to mean? Then you include the Windows H. You know the classic stuff. Okay, cool. Mm, yeah, it should be okay. Mm -hmm. Where is no min max? I have no idea what that is. Uh, win32, no. Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember this one. Let's actually include no min max. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, we're programming in, on, on pure C. We don't have min max there anyway, so. I mean, eh, but we can include it. Ah, whatever. Okay. Uh, all right, so so this one is gonna be a uh, fix bad comment. Uh, another one. I'm sorry, I'm C++ dev. That's okay. I also used to be a C++ dev. It's just a phase, my friend. Okay. Um, include uh, Windows uh, shite. And let's push that right into the repo. Literally running the build. This branch conflict has to be resolved. And Heiser, I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Your first subscription, by the way. Thank you very much. And welcome to our Branch Conflict Club. That's right. Uh, that's what we do every day. We're resolving branch conflicts. What the hell are you talking about? Are you sure about that, mate? Uh, the fuck? <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm gonna ignore that. Um, and let's take a look at this stuff. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, S, S size, classic. All right, so let's actually remove S size. Uh, S size. Um, okay, so we can just do integer instead. Mm. There was also S size fix in something. Really? I mean, S size is just literally integer, right? Is it not? So we can just use integer then, like it's... Uh, or furthermore, we can just do size t uh, 0, right, and then after we counted everything, I can just do seps, uh, uh, seps count minus 1. It's like, whatever, <laughs> seriously. Uh, S size. I think anything else is literally bike shedding at this point. <laughs> uh, S size, okay. Uh, okay, it seems to be seems to be working. It's a science equivalent of size T. Yes, like it's just like uh, it's not even worth uh, this much attention. Uh, so yeah, uh, get rid of size T. 
Um, all right. Uh, cool. Mm. So why is it conflicting? Like, GitHub, are you drunk or something? The fuck? Um. Uh, oh, did I forget to fetch the other stuff? I might be actually forgetting to. F okay, I see. I think I know what the fuck is going on. Um. Origin master. Okay. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, at, at some point I can just rebase it, right? It's not that big of a deal. So, yeah, so uh, now I know. It's not, it's not the GitHub that is drunk, it's me. Even though I don't drink, so... Um, maybe I don't even need to force push, to be fair. I can just merge and resolve the conflict. It's just not that big of a deal. Seriously. Mm. Drunk Zozin. Well, Drunk Zozin is actually not that interesting of a person, trust me. <laughs> so, uh, I just get very tired and sleepy, so that's it. So, trust me, me sober as a person is way more interesting than me drunk. So, yeah, when I'm, when I'm drunk, I just want to sleep, that's it. Mm -mm -mm. When I'm drunk, I can stop telling everyone I'm drunk, yeah, let's see. Just like after five hours streaming, yeah, exactly. That's why I don't drink, I don't need to drink, I just need to stream. Mm. When in Russia, vodka doesn't count as drinking. Aha, very funny. We're still waiting for the MSVC build, it doesn't want to start. Let's start. I think GitHub is suspecting something. Mm, you never drink. I don't drink any more uh, alcohol at all. I used to drink. I don't drink anymore. Mm. Well, sometimes I drink kvass, but uh, according to Russian laws, it does not count as an alcohol drink. So. And to be fair, you need to drink shit ton of kvass to actually get drunk on it. I think uh, your body decomposes the alcohol faster than you can actually consume it by drinking kvass. <sighs> oh, sub developer R, please speak English, nobody understands you. So it's an English speaking stream. But hello, my comrade, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Drinking in 2021, yeah. Finally, it started the build! Hallelujah! Mm. Okay. Привет! Привет, привет! Hello. So, that means hello, yeah, it literally means hello. Mm. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, that's super cool. That is super cool. Um, yeah, we're starting to have like PID and dot syntax missing semicolon. Are you serious? Is that what you're trying to? Okay. Um, so PID, uh, PID T. And then it says missing semicolon at 191. Really? So it cannot find the name PID underscore T and the next error it tells us missing semicolon. Nice compiler by the way. <laughs> what a nice compiler, holy oh, shit. Um, <clears throat> uh, we are developing a new a build system in C. Uh, Alright, so let me think how we're gonna do all of that. So maybe I'm gonna create like a separate function that just accepts the argv. It just accepts the argv, and depending on the operating system, it is gonna do that differently, right? I think it. No, no. Ah, all right. So if def win32, uh, it's actually on the other side. 
I think. Yeah. So, how are we gonna call this function, by the way? <clears throat> um, build h exec. So, this is how we're gonna call it. Uh, const char arg v. So, and it's gonna be null terminated. Alright, and on Windows is gonna be one thing, on Linux is gonna be another thing. Um, mm, else and if. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, let's actually quickly do that. Uh, so this is gonna be like this. Uh, do we need anything else? I don't think we need anything else. I can literally just copy-paste this entire stuff to there. Like, this is on Linux and whatnot, right? So this is argv. Um, <clears throat> And I just do build h exec arg v. There we go. So basically, it's going to be a cross platform version of this entire shit. And uh, then I'm going to put this thing here. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let me see if it's going to compile or not. Uh, no file or directory. Really? Are you serious? Uh, I don't know what happened, but that was weird. Okay. All right. So everything seems to be working. So um, let me see. Let me see. Can I uh, now go there? Hmm. What other programming languages do you know? I don't know any programming language. I just copy-paste code from Stack Overflow. I don't need to know any programming language. Uh, right. Because, first of all, I'm not a programmer. So, only programmers need to know um, programming languages. I'm not a programmer. And second of all, if I need to write some code, I just copy-paste stuff from Stack Overflow or from uh, MS, uh, you know, MSDN. So, yeah. <clears throat> Mm, is there an example? Oh, there is. Nice. Is that an example? This doesn't look like an example. Okay, there we go. Mm. This point is reached only if, if exec fails. Run the uh, following program and execute. Mm -hmm. mm. Is it possible to fork? So, yeah. It's very interesting. So, um, exec VP doesn't fork, but how do you even fork? So that's a good question. Anyway, uh, we can try to do that. So it's going to be just exec VP and, um, we can just give it a try. Um, exec VP, um, yeah, where's the example? Yeah. Okay, cool argv so oh by the way i need to read more about execvp does it end with uh null terminator or something it, it must end with the null terminator that's for sure uh, uh new child process parameter array of pointers to parameter uh more information about this and other um null Okay, exactly the function validate their names. If the command uh, is a null pointer, the argv is a null pointer pointer to empty a string. Uh, hello, negative plasma. Welcome to our stream and thank you for the rate. So, uh, is a null pointer? Okay. I think I'm, I think I'm going to assume that it's null terminated. So, and another thing I'm going to do is just going to argv uh, like this, and hopefully that will work properly. 
So, and it also can return like a negative thingy. So, and uh, this is basically what we want to check here. Uh, so, yeah, essentially. So, and what's the type it accepts here? It accepts the same type, so maybe it makes sense to also cast it like that. Um, Alright, so let me see if it compiles. Did I do the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it actually uh, read it properly. Alright. Oh shit! Oh my god! I'm an idiot. Oh my god, I'm a such a Oh my god! Holy shit! I was doing everything in the wrong branch. Holy shit! Why am I so dumb? Oh my god. Ooh. Uh, just a second. All right, I'm gonna be back. <sighs> All right, let's continue. So, uh, okay, I'm back, and let me take a look at the div between these files. It's gonna be u build.c and c back. Uh, and there's not that much difference. Okay, so that's that's fair. I think c shouldn't be that different. Uh, okay, so it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So I can just do something like this, and I can rename it back. We can remove this thing. Cool. So it wasn't that bad. All right. So we managed to fix all of this. Mm. Cool. Uh, so what did, what did we do here? Um, we introduced cross-platform exec. Introduce. Uh, introduce cross platform exec and let's push that right into the repo mm. all right so uh let's see bye bye chaos plots see you around mm. oh shit i need to pee uh, okay let's go to windows branch Mm. Uh, what the fuck happened with my page? Okay, I see. It keeps jumping around, holy shit. Okay, show me, show me what you've got. Show me. Can you compile this shit? You can do it, I believe in you. Uh, might as well actually try to refresh everything just in case and it keeps building things like it took already 20 seconds to build okay it failed nice it compiled okay so now it fails on a completely different uh, place uh, so my entire cross-platform shit compiled uh, amazing so yeah now we're trying to use DRAND yeah so DRAND is actually kind of easy to do on Windows um, because we implemented like a mini version of DRAND for Windows at some point for something and for nothing and I think I'm gonna actually bring that uh, mini version of DRAND here uh, so it looks like this so it's like around uh, 67 lines of code but it implements like a very small subset of DRAND uh, that we already use anyway um, so I think I'm gonna just literally copy paste this entire thing. I, I want to actually kind of release this mini DRAND uh, as a like header library at some point, because I usually don't use more than this small subset of DRAND anyway, and this is a very cross-platform subset of DRAND. 
So, um, I don't know. But yeah, let's actually go place this into I think. And I'm gonna literally bring it here. So here, um, yeah. Um, let me put it this way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I, wanna I need to copy paste it one more time. I'm gonna put it here. So here is the way we're gonna treat it. So if this thing is a Windows, we're gonna use this entire thing. Uh huh. So otherwise, otherwise, we're gonna include derent uh, derent dot h, right? Uh, and if um, win thirty two. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole thing, which is cool. Right, then we can remove this thing from here completely. So yeah, if it's Windows, you use that as a derent. If it's not Windows, you can just include derent here like that. So, and that should make the dir thingy work on Windows. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it should make this chunk of code work on Windows uh, seamlessly. Uh, all right, so let's, let's try to compile that, see if it compiles. Um, um, include mini rent for Windows. Yeah, I'm gonna call this li library mini rent. So there's a drent, and this is a mini rent, uh, essentially like a small subset of drent implemented for Windows. So I really like this name, mini rent. <laughs> uh, I, I probably can do it right now or today. Or something. It could be like a just literally header library, like mini rent. Huh. So, and actually, this is the third place where I use it. First, I uh, used it on, on Windows, All right? Then I uh, uh, first I used it for nothing, uh, then I used it on something, and then I use it like here. So, this very small subset of DRAND is very important, All right? So, it could be, yeah, I think, it, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, so let's see if it compiles. So right now we're just trying to bootstrap the first phase of the uh, of the build, right? We're bootstrapping the first phase, and um, I'm not sure if it's gonna run properly at all. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Mm. If it will bootstrap properly uh, on Windows, it will be actually pretty cool already. So the only doubts that I have about Windows is the um, the exec. I think exec is not going to work on Windows. I think, well, it does create a separate process, but I don't think it actually do that correctly or something, whatever. Um, okay, so Windows already fails. Oh, let's take a look at where exactly it fails. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so it still fails with drent uh, 26. Uh, so uh, 26 dir. Huh. Declared identifier and declared. Ident Is this because of the struct shit? Do I have to? Do, I think I have to do it like that. So it was used usually on uh, C. M maybe that requires it to be like that, but that's really strange. Like I literally defined the structure here. Uh, missing before. Huh. Th that's really strange, but I mean, on Windows it shouldn't matter, I think. Oh, unless it's it is tries to build it in some sort of like a C mode or something. Okay, let's actually try to uh, to fix that. Try uh, to fix MSVC compilation error, but I'm not sure if it will help. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna push that right into the repo, and I need to make a small break. There is a C mode. Okay, so maybe it, it is because of the C mode. Uh, we're about to find out. Uh, all right, so it's gonna be like that, and uh, it's gonna be so one. All right, uh, let's make a small break, and you guys have uh, fun. Uh, um
Yo, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, so, uh, let's continue. So, let's see uh, where exactly MSVC has failed now. Um, alrighty. What do we got? What do we got? It did a really weird thingy there. Okay, so the error is different, which means that yes, it was because of some sort of a C mode. Perfect. Uh, 54. Um, okay, so... Huh. I, I used struct in here, but then I didn't use it here. Uh, Alright, so... Mm. Try to fix MSVC error uh, yet again. But this time it's a different one and I think it will work because I learned uh, learned about the MSVC's uh, C mod. Uh, and let's push that right into the loop and see how it's gonna go. All right, confidence, yes. Now I'm a little bit more confident than I was before, than I was in the previous commit. That's basically what it is. Uh, all right. So I feel like I'm like programming in the 80s, doing batch processing on a remote machine, uh, making small changes and sending them to the mainframe and waiting for uh, waiting for the results or something like that. That's what I feel like right now. It's just it's pretty cool. Uh, all right. So if I remember correctly, to com uh, to compile as C on the MSVC, it wants a TC flag, but I didn't provide it. But it still has some sort of a C mode. Uh, all right. Oh, okay. So what's interesting is that the previous time I wasn't confident that it will fix the problem, and it fixed it. Now I was confident that it fixed the problem, but it didn't. <laughs> This is like a summary of my entire fucking life. Anyway, so uh, I think I kind of know what exactly happened. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, Durant type is never defined because it's defined in a header, right? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so we have a header. And this is where it is... De Holy shit! And this is where we also have this type definition. shit. Fucking classic, I see. I see, I see, I see, I see. All right. So and uh, yeah, let's let's just define this thing here. It's gonna be just a name. Uh, max path. Do we even have a max path in Windows? Uh, Windows max path. So name files, name spaces. Uh, uh, max path. I think I think we do have max path there. So um, okay. Uh, Richard Lau, uh, thank you so much for uh, tier one subscription. Uh, your first subscription, by the way. And welcome to Epic Max Path Club. Oh, wait a second, is it? No, it says Max Path. So it's like literally says Max Path, but I'm not sure if I can rely on this thing. Uh, yeah. well, let's give it a try. If it fails, it fails. Um, all right, yeah. So we also, it also has plus one for some reason, but whatever. Uh, so, okay, try to fix MSVC build, but for real this time, uh, but I'm not gonna be confident just uh, in case. Uh, let's push that. All right. Mm. Not gonna confident. Ah! So let's see what's gonna uh, what the MSVC build gonna tell us this time. What's up, Richard? Lau? What's up? What's up? What's wrong with being confident? Well, I was confident, and the build failed. 
and I wasn't confident and build succeeded. So I extrapolated these two, <laughs> these two points and now I'm trying not to be confident anymore. Okay. Well, does this mean that it builds successfully? All right, this is very interesting. I think it builds it successfully. Wrong call of function. So that means it's a runtime error. Perfect. So this is exactly what I want to see. Uh, all right, so let's do build C. Uh, and we're going to try to do the following thing. So I'm going to comment out this thing and I'm going to only call to build bin just to see if it creates this thing correctly. So we're going to, uh, you know, uh, path is already including null terminator. Um, sure. Um, okay, so we're going to try uh, to do this thing. So let's just try to create folders. Uh, yeah, we are creating folders. I saw these errors every time when I was trying to execute x86. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, that it's a well-known thing, that means it's a runtime thing. Uh, try, uh, try to... Um, starting uh, msvc runtime error uh, bisecting. Uh, limiting the build to a bare minimum. Um, just to see, just to see if the creation of folders work. Uh, Pipega commits starting a necessary and then bisecting, limiting the build to a bare minimum just to see if the creation... Where, where, where is the Pipega? Did they make any mistakes here? Uh, it's, I think it's a pretty good commit. I'm just explaining everything what I do. It's, it's a good commit, right? Then later, um, people who will study my work <laughs> And nobody's gonna study more. But then somebody who wanna uh, see why the fuck these changes were, uh, uh, were made, uh, they can look back in history and like see everything what I was trying to do. Uh, wouldn't it be easier to have a virtual machine to test a Windows build instead of creating a tons of commits? I don't think so because um, I don't have a place to run this virtual machine. I have a single laptop uh, and it barely works with me just streaming on it. Uh, so if I try to run a virtual machine, it's going to be a fucking disaster, right? So, uh, or maybe I can set it up on a separate, like a VPS, but that takes time. But I already have it set up uh, on the CI. So I think it's a good enough solution. So, uh, uh, all right, so let's see. Mm. But it didn't output, but maybe uh, the output is buffered, uh, a good look. So maybe it was buffered and then it crashed with some sort of a signal that didn't give the process an opportunity to flash the buffer. So it could be, uh, well, uh, it is, I don't think it's guaranteed that the buffer has to, has to be flashed in new line. So I encountered the situation when the buffer was not flashed in new line and I also was troubleshooting uh, for a long time, so. In any case, checking specifically for that won't hurt, right? So it won't hurt. Um, all right, so let's see. Mm, all right, it's doing things. Job safety policy on commit messages, yes. Uh, okay, we're building. And... Also keep in mind that this is a GitHub Actions. They do all sorts of crazy shit with the output of the commands. So sometimes the std out and std error are in a completely different order than it should be. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't... I don't think, I, uh, you know, you should rely on the on the output for these particular situations. You should rely on it, but not too much, right? You need to question the output all the time. 
There you go, here's your output. You just print it, make deers, and it created the deers. So, exactly as I predicted. Exactly as I predicted. It's a fucking classic situation. Um, Alright, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> So, uh, the next thing I think we need to try to do is... Well, I mean, definitely this for each works. So, it probably fails somewhere here. It probably fails somewhere here. Let's find out. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, Enable full uh, build of the tool chain. Let's see if the MSVC build fails somewhere there. Uh, and it's quite important because it might be failing on the example building, because in example building we call this weird Win32 functions. Um, uh, why there is no slash or or whatever MSVC is using? Because we do that through the flags. So on Windows, you can do FO and provide the folder. So all of the executables will be dropped here. So, and the name of the executable is going to be the name of the file, but instead of C extension, it's going to be .exe extension. So that's the difference here. So we can just do it like that and just don't provide output and it will always be uh, put there. Uh, actually, it's not fo. It's fo is for, is for object files. For executables, you need fe, right? So it's, it's like that. It's kind of weird. It's MSVC. Uh, but yeah. Mm. Alrighty. So uh, did I commit everything? I think I already commit everything, and let's push that. Mm. Yeah, it outputs to name the by default. It's fucking in Microsoft Windows. Uh, Alright, so at least we already have a cross-platform make deers function, which is very important, because we have at least something, you know, cross-platform. Um, right, so because later then we can expand the cross-platforms. You always have to start with these with this small steps, right? Small steps. Okay, so I, I should probably open the lock right now. I don't know what I'm waiting for. Let's open the lock. Uh, Alright, so now... And it fails exactly because of that. Uh, okay, so let me try another thing. Uh, I have an idea where exactly it fails. So it probably fails somewhere in exec.h. Right. So let's make this weird hypothesis. Do you fail somewhere here? Right. Uh, all right. Um, disable ex, uh, build uh, exec for Windows. Um, let's test the hypothesis that uh, the crash is caused uh, caused by exec vp because uh, because it is the most obvious candidate all right and let's push that button there we go. who can help me with the questions in c i don't know i didn't program in c uh unfortunately i wish i programmed in c and could get a lot of money but I'm probably gonna see. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Mm. We all program in JavaScript in here. So, yeah. It is what it is. Mm. But, I mean, in 2021, you don't really need C anyway. 
right? So you need JavaScript. Everything is in JavaScript in 2021. YAML programming, yes. It worked. Right. So it logged this shit CL something something CL. Um, right. Which is pretty cool. So these are reasonable uh, command lines, I think. But the problem here is that. Uh huh. That's, that's cool. So yeah, that was the candidate. So this is the problem. So we'll just call this function incorrectly. Maybe I need to read more about how to use it. Uh, maybe I can do also, I mean, I already have it opened. So uh, exec VP example. Uh, how to use exec VP example uh, windows. Uh, it feels like all right, so maybe... Class function is a function you wish to execute. Mm. Uh, all right. Command a path of the file to execute. Mm. Successful the function do not return the calling process. Do not return to the calling process. Okay, so you still need to fork. A return value indicates an error. Each of these functions loads and executes a new process, passing an array of pointers to command line argument and using uh, the path environment variables to find the execute the, the, the file path to execute. As the keeper validates the, uh, the parameters, the command name. If the command name is a pointer or arg is no pointer pointer to empty array or if it contains an empty string as the first argument, this function is invoke invalid parameter handler described here if the execution is uh, allowed to continue. Um, okay. So I think I already looked into that, but I want to look at it one more time. Uh, this is a Okay, okay. Loads an executable and new process. All exec functions use the same operating system function create process. The exec functions automatically uh, handle multi byte blah blah blah. Okay. The parameter specifies the file to be executed as the new process. Uh -huh. the parameters are passed to the new uh, by giving one more. All right. So the, oh, holy shit, uh, exec, uh, useful when the number of parameters in the process of variable point, pointers to the parameter passed as an array, the parameter zero is usually pointed to command name, uh, the parameter one through n pointed to the, okay, uh, the new parameter list, okay, that's exactly what I wanted to know, mm-hmm, so, so this is my environment, so, so this is args, this is essentially what I do here. And yeah, this is exactly the, the thing I do here, believe it or not. I have an idea. Um, it could be because the CL, running CL process fails. It could be because of that. Uh, build uh, MSVC. Where is the MSVC? Uh -huh. So it should be okay. Huh. Is there any external commands that I can run in CMD? Um, just to test that they can execute external command and whatnot. I'm not sure if we can easily do that. So what I can execute there? Does anyone know? System? Is that a CMD command? Um, so if I do where, uh, uh, this... 
You have systems for... Why? This is not what I'm asking. What are you censoring? <laughs> this is not what I'm... Is there any command in Windows that I can execute instead of CL just to test if it works or not? What are you guys talking about? But spawn is actually something interesting. It sounds... Okay, echo. Right, echo. Is it a separate executable in Windows? Or is it a built-in CNT command? This is the good question. Um, is it built-in command of CMD or is it a separate problem? Okay, so that means it's useless. Uh, all right. So somebody mentioned spawn. Uh, I'm kind of curious what it is. Let me let me check it out. Spawn. Um, Create and execute a new process. They automatically handle multi bed Okay. Okay. Dear Okay. Sounds interesting. Uh, is there an example for this? Oh, holy shit. Uh huh. Mm, if you call spawn. Okay. What's the difference between uh, exactly P and spawn? Create and execute a new process. They automatically handle. This is not what I care about. Uh, okay, sounds like an interesting thing. Maybe that's this is what we're gonna use here. Uh, array of pointers. Each of the songs you get and execute it and pass. Uh, okay. To use uh, this function will be the parameter. I think exec uses this uh, thread versus spawn create a new thread. Um, okay, but is it, is it really what I need? Because it doesn't really explain the difference. Okay, so, um, <sighs> underscore exec versus spawn. So what's up with that? nice like uh, some summary what's the difference between them why do we need separate functions what's the difference between them inherit from colon process pointer to this uh, is that the same thing or is that a different one uh, okay we can try to just do spawn uh, instead of exec and see maybe it will work uh, spawn uh, VP. I think that's what we need here. Uh, so it's gonna be like that. Spawn. Exactly replaces the current program with the spawn creates a new process. Okay, so this is exactly what was my hypothesis. Um, cool. But I just wanted to have a confirmation. <laughs> Right, somewhere because uh, this is obvious. The most obvious difference between them, like spawn creates a new thing and exec replaces one. Uh, but I want we need like explicit differences between them. Uh, I also another thing. Can you wait for uh, for the process? Uh, the return value from the synchronous spawn. Oh, this is actually cool. So can I just? Uh... Oh shit! You also have to specify the uh, the the mode. Uh, Alright, so maybe we can also do... Holy shit, this is exactly what I need here. So I think we're gonna do it like that. Yeah, P wait. Alright, so we wait for this thing. Uh, oh shit, that's super cool. Um, okay, I'm also gonna put this thing here. Maybe. Thank you so much whoever mentioned spawn. This is exactly what I needed here. Uh, Alright, so let me try to build that on Linux. All right, this is the Linux build. Uh, try to use spawn instead of exec for Windows. Uh, spawn, spawn. I, I'm pretty sure I pronounced it incorrectly. I'm re I really apologize for my pronunciation. <laughs> uh, um, should create a new process 
instead of replacing it uh, like exact uh, also with the weight thingy where's the where's the weight where's the weight with uh, p um, weight mm, mode it should be synchronous and wait for the child to die <laughs> finish uh okay all right let's push that uh right into the river cool uh Cool, 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 cool. Now, let's take a look at that shite. Um, um, bum, 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 bum. Cool. I need more tea. <laughs> That's your mom file, yes. Uh, I build your mom file. <laughs> ah, got him! All right. Uh, oh shit! P weight is not available. Uh, do I have to include some shit? Uh, uh, the return value from the synchronous. Uh huh. That's really. Did I really fuck it up so badly? Uh huh. Can build your mom not enough memory. Get them. Got him. Uh, uh, P. Wait, not found. Why it working in shell script? Are you fucking serious, dude? I mean, P. Like this entire thing. Uh, all right. Why I I don't have it. Like where can I get it? Do I have to include something special? Oh shit! Okay, that's cool. So, so let's include that stuff here as well. Protus. So I assume Protus is also a Windows thing, right? So Protus.h. Uh, all right, that's interesting. Cool. Um, wait. Uh, include process.h uh, for windows according to this should fix the no p weight uh, error right uh, let's push that right at the very far. cool that's how you write a good commit messages, chat. Right? Not just as the fast, the fast, the whatever, right? So you have to explain what you do. You have to explain your entire thought process. <laughs> is, it, is, that, is that what the, the podcast said? <laughs> what is this so funny? <laughs> all right um okay so we're waiting for the uh for the windows oh shit it also failed what the fuck uh it also failed and for the same reason um that's very interesting so spawn would be Huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I forgot? I forgot to null terminate the arguments. <laughs> yes, it's, it is. That's why it's fun. Um, so that's the cost of maintainability. Uh, so <laughs> essentially, um, 
Yeah, so what I forgot to do here is, uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, it seems to be uh, compiling now. All right. No terminate terminate uh, arguments in CMD impl. I have no idea why this worked on Linux, but that I think breaks the Windows uh, Windows uh, builds. Thank you, Linux. Very cool. Okay, let's push that. This machine. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. Stop. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. All right. Descriptive comment messages, yes. Oh shit! It it fucking works. It fucking build everything. It built toolchain. The fuck? <laughs> it actually built the toolchain successfully. Holy shit! I'm so proud of myself. Um. Holy fuck! This is amazing. Uh, all right, so let's try to enable the the rest of the shit. Uh, so let's build the examples now. Um, this is so fucking cool. It's a like this script works both on Linux and Windows, and not only Windows but MSVC stuff. MSVC the most fucking annoying shit to deal with it works there it's fucking amazing uh all right so i, I didn't expect that i'll manage to pull that off uh not script uh, yeah probably um enable uh examples building examples building to uh before works in github actions well i mean uh we have people who use windows to test that out <clears throat> How do you build on GitHub like that? You use something called GitHub Actions. Uh, GitHub Actions, just Google them up and uh, there's a lot of documentation on how to set them up uh, for your machine, so. Uh, yep, yeah. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I was about to close this tab, but I closed the chat instead, so. uh, Rage, Rage quit the chat, uh, I didn't mean to, okay. Uh, to test Windows builds, it should work now. Pog. Okay, let's see. Close the chat. Haha. <laughs> all, right. uh, all right. Let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen. Mm. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So we're waiting. So I think it's gonna be success. I think it's gonna be success. Mm. Oh shit! Oh, is that a is that an error? No, no, no. It's not an error. Okay, we're this is some bullshit. But now we're doing the build. We're doing build.c. Hopefully, hopefully we're doing build.c. Uh, okay, we're running the build.c. I think. So the compiler actually did the did its stuff. Uh, we're building all of these things here, uh, and we successfully build examples. Uh, okay, build is successful, right? Error: the log was not found. It may have been deleted, passed on retention uh, settings. And if I refresh the page, uh, it's it's gone. Welcome 
to 2021 web development. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful world of 2021 uh, web. So there we go. This is the full build. Uh, yep. It works both on Linux and Windows. So what do we have to say now, dollars? Okay. Uh, let's get to it. Uh, and yeah, that's the whole thing, right? Uh, that's the whole thing. Um, we can also try to run tests and whatnot. Um, let's run the tests. Why not? Hell, uh, let's, let's run the tests. Is it failing if you have an error as an example? Uh, it probably should. Well, it fails on Linux. That's for sure. Um, even if it doesn't fail, it's actually super easy to fix. So what else have I wanted to, to test? Yeah, let's actually run it on macOS now. So we have workflows. Uh, all right, all right. So we also want to try Clang. Uh, 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 uh. So we don't have a FreeBSD. So, but macOS is actually super close to FreeBSD. So I think I think we're gonna do it like that. So it's gonna be Clang O Build Exe. Uh, build dot c there we go and after that of course you just have to do build dot exe build dot exe mm, enable enable uh, build dot c on mac os let's push that Um, mm, 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 mm. You guys ready? You guys ready? We're gonna test that on Mac OS. OS. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Waiting for Mac OS. Set up job. So I'm just thinking, what's going to be the next step? So we have this build thingy. Um, should it become the production thing? Um, maybe. Uh, build all examples. So it's running the commented out thing. Uh, oh, wait. All right, so it's already built everything. It's executing that. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time, probably accumulating the output. Uh, you know, the usual web stuff. Um, did it went to some sort of like infinite loop or something? I'm not quite sure what the hell is going on. Um, yeah, it's just trying its best. It's just trying its best. Mm. If I pick out, put every uh, like every time. Um, so another interesting thing that we probably want. Oh shit! The fuck was that? <laughs> GitHub actions are just like so bad. Holy shit! Okay, uh, expand from macro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So overall. Well, there were, there were a couple of warnings with conversions and shit, but that can be omitted for now. Uh, what's important is that everything worked on macOS. Uh, you see, the log is correct. So we managed to build everything on macOS. So we have a build in C that works on um, Linux, Windows, and macOS. Isn't that amazing? I think it's good and amazing. Another thing we can try to do now, we can try to run the tests. Run tests. So this is going to be the function. Uh, run the tests. And the way we're going to run them, right? So, um, mm, so uh, right now we have a, a separate script in here uh, that iterates through all of the files uh, from here. 
So here is the example. Uh, but the thing about examples is that we remove that bosom thingy from there, um, which is kind of not particularly convenient, but anyway. Uh, what we have to do here is for each uh, file in directory, so it's going to be, um, I guess we're going to call it example. And the directory we're looking into is, yeah, we're also looking into the examples, I suppose. Uh, we're looking into the examples and here is the body. It's kind of similar to building the examples though. Right, it is very similar to building the examples. Um, you know what? Here's an interesting thing. So we are not working correctly with uh, with this stuff. So in an example, we have to actually remove uh, the extension, right? We have to actually remove the extension. Um, so here is examples, and then we need to remove extension and replace the extension with bm. So let me think how we can do all of that. Um, so how do you... Yeah, we can introduce something like remove ext, right? Just to remove ext, uh, which does not necessarily have to be like a macro, but uh, it will create a new string and remove the extension for you. Uh, and it could be a temporary solution for now. I think it could be... Yeah, it could be an okay idea. So, all right, so let's go to the build.h uh, and implement that somehow. So it's going to be const char, um, maybe, maybe code like that to distinguish that it's not a macro, at least for now. Um, okay, so remove extension is going to be something like path. Um, and the way we're going to do that, we're going to just iterate starting from the back and uh, find the dot, right? We're gonna try to find the dot. Uh, and what's gonna happen if we're not gonna find the dot? That's a good question. I think we're not gonna do anything. All right, so... Uh, what's gonna be the easiest way to do? So maybe it's gonna be size t n ester len uh, path. All right. So, and while... So maybe it could actually go to the negative part, I'm not sure, while n is um, greater or equal than zero. Greater or equal than zero. Well, because of that, it could be actually size, right? So while it's uh, greater than zero, uh, what do we do? And path n minus one. Uh, is not equal to dot, we keep uh, subtracting one from it, right? So this is basically how we search from the back uh, for the dot. So, and if n is still greater than zero, only then we're gonna try to do something, otherwise we can just return, uh, return the path as it is without modifying anything. Uh, Go in reverse so you can have a dot in the name. Isn't that what I exactly do here? Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I do here. Anyways, so we're gonna do malloc, uh, then we allocate n, uh, actually plus one for the multi mid. So this one is gonna be resolved. This one is going to be return result. Mem copy uh, result uh, path n uh, and then result uh, result n zero. There we go. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, now, so usually, oh yeah, let, let's give it a try. <laughs> okay, so dot is included somehow, right? Dot is included. Um, so we shouldn't actually include that though. Why did it include the dot though? Um, excuse me. Because I would expect n, so if you have hello dot bosom, right, so size is essentially like this 
Right, size is essentially this. Right, so that means I allocate like five and plus one for additional stuff. Um, then I copy N, but then I set N to zero, so I know N points. Ah, it's because of this thing. I see. I see, I see. Uh huh. Okay, so. Alright, so that means maybe we can uh, actually put it like that. So allocate n uh, and maybe n minus one. I'm not sure if I'll fall into some trap because I'm really tired right now, so I might be missing something. Uh, but maybe it's gonna work for a particular case. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I'm missing some kind of, some kind of a corny case here, so it's probably dangerous, but uh, I don't care because it's gonna work anyway, for now at least. Uh, so if there is any mistake, feel free to submit like a pull request or issue uh, when we release that, of course. Uh, all right, so this is uh, the windows. Uh, this is the examples. And now uh, to test the examples, I should be able to do the following thing, right? We do very similar stuff, right? When we run the tests, but instead of building the test, we, what we run, we run BMR. So we're running BMR. Um, run tests and we provide the program and the program is located in uh, build examples uh, example but it has to be BM actually so that means we have to remove extension from here uh, and concat this entire thing with a BM. That's how we're gonna do a go about that. Right, so we iterate all the examples, we removed ex extension from that. Uh, so might as well actually do something like this const char example base, and this is what we're gonna have here example base, uh, example base. There we go. Uh, and then I compare this entire thing with path test uh, examples, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, I fucked up here. I fucked up, so I have to do it like this. So it's completely like different. With a different like paradigm. I'm not sure how to explain it. So we have to put it here, uh, then it's build test, build test, and this is concat example base, but it's gonna be expected out. There we go. So this is how we're gonna run the tests. Oh boy. Okay, so let me try to get rid of the build uh, folder here. Uh, all right, so and then uh, let's, let's run this entire stuff. Uh huh. So we're building the tool chain, then we're building everything here. So in the build folder, I can take a look at the find. So here is the full tree that was built here successfully. And now in the build, uh, build.c, I'm going to enable this thing. Right. So and let's go ahead and do that. And unknown flag. Okay. Yeah, 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 so that means I have to provide additional flag in here. So it's going to be P. So this is the P flag. And this is the flag expected output, right? So this is the expected output. And there we go. So now we're also running. Yes, this is perfect. So we are building the tool chain, building the examples, and then we're testing the examples. Uh, just to check whether they produce the expected output or not and all of that from within just C without any shell or anything and in theory it should also work on Windows too uh, because we have a set of cross-platform tools in here 
So that's pretty. That's pretty pog. That's pretty pog. Um, uh, Alrighty. So let me see. Let me see. Um, Mm, 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 mm. So and that will enable us with getting rid of all of these build scripts and whatnot. Uh, oh, by the way, let's test if it's gonna fail if it crashes or something, right? So I'm gonna go to the Fibonacci sequence and uh, just remove nine from here and uh, let's see, is it gonna stop? Uh, all right. So yeah, I mean it failed, but it didn't stop, right? And I think yeah. So for now. It didn't even produce any error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So essentially, if it fails, it doesn't produce any error. Uh, but it's a separate, yeah, separate thing that we have to then implement at some point. Um, right, and then we can go here, put nine here, and rebuild everything from scratch. All right. And then it builds everything, and everything is okay. So that's pretty cool. Huh. All right. Um, so uh, what to do's do we have here? So remember, I had some to do's for yeah. Maybe this doesn't work on Windows. By the way, this one is done. Uh, it does work on Windows now. Uh, right. Wait. Wait a fucking second. Well, it does work on Windows. Like, this just, this call just works on Windows, apparently. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that, sure. <laughs> like, I, I thought I would have to do underscore make dear, but apparently it just, okay, sure. Uh, to do, uh, this thing works on Windows. So I can say that for sure. Uh, shell fails not properly reported on Linux. Okay. Um, also, let's see if the child fail is properly reported on uh, on Linux. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So let's give me that. Um, run tests uh, using build.c. Uh, let's push that. Are you guys ready? We're gonna test all of that out on Windows. Mm -hmm. I really like that it's going somewhere. The entire build system is really going somewhere. I like the place where it's going. And you can use everything in C. Like you, you can use structures, you can use if loops, um, arrays, uh, functions, you can organize things, you can maybe have even uh, special libraries that do things maybe you can have a GUI that shows you something while we're building so yeah we can, we can do that uh, so I think it's pretty cool <clears throat> uh, why not why not it's not I don't know like uh, implementing GUIs kind of will require a special like, dependency and whatnot could not execute child process exact format error Ooh, that is very interesting. But at the same time, it worked. Um, uh, all right, already exists. Right, it built everything. Oh, shit. I think it fails. Okay, I think it fails uh, on Windows. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go just rerun this entire. Well, no, 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 it doesn't doesn't fail on Windows. Like it should work. Uh, let me. Could not execute the child. Process exec format error, but it's kind of difficult to. Uh, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint like where exactly. Like, why does it, is it fail like that? Um, did I really fuck it up? It could be yet another, like, zero thing 
Yeah, I probably need to uh, need to get this thing right, unfortunately. Uh, null terminated thing. It could be uh, yet another null terminated thing. So, do we have any errors in here? So, here's the length. Right. Um, here's the length. And uh, we're going in the opposite direction. We're going in the opposite direction. Then we allocate enough memory. We mem copy everything there. But I don't see any particular errors in here. It's just it fails specifically on BMR. It fails specifically when I couldn't execute exec format error. Um, mm, mm, build h exec. Could not execute. Ah. Uh -huh. Why is that a format error? Why would it be a format error? I don't think so. Mm, I have an idea. We can try to do the following thing. Uh -huh. Alright. Oh yeah, I see. Um, I'm trying to get rid of this thing, but it's kind of difficult. Uh, Alright, so le let me see if it's gonna work or not. Okay, that's cool. Um, Try to remove some of the arguments of BMR. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm testing here, but I'm trying to check a hypothesis that it's related somehow to new termination stuff in Recon cat in uh, remove extension. This is what I'm trying to do here. I'm not sure if it will be related. So, uh, yes, so, yes, so, yes, so. Very strange. Take a look at Windows stuff. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so we're we bootstrapping the build. Bootstrapping the build. We're running the build as far as I can tell. This is very, very interesting. So we're building the tool chain. So the tool chain. The B BMR. Oh shit! I know what it could. What could it be? Uh, it could be the same thing. It could be the same thing as with a arch sixty four. Yeah. So essentially, it tries to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay, okay. Chat, chat, chat. Please don't make fun of me when I tell you that. Chat, please. I think this is because. Um, BMR unironically allocates around three gigabytes of static memory. Ah. Because it it okay, so it has uh, we have a notion of an arena, okay? Oh okay. Uh all right, so uh in BM Yes, arena. Uh, yeah, so here's the arena capacity. Uh, the size of the arena is one gigabyte, right? So the first thing we need to do in there, we need to load the thing. 
uh, or maybe two gigabytes, right? So, and we create two separate arenas and each arena is essentially a one gig of memory. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> So, yesterday Nico was trying to run BM on, uh, on ARM64, as far as I know, right? And it, it failed there because of the same reason. So, I, I did a really quick and dirty hack. Um, so, <laughs> that's basically what happened. I think the easiest uh, fix for now could be to just, you know, reduce the size of the arena. We can make the size of the arena like uh, 500, like... Uh, like, yeah, maybe it could be 640 a kilobyte. It doesn't really have to be that big, right? It doesn't really have to be that big. Uh, it's just like on all these platforms, the virtual memory might not be uh, actually functioning correctly or something. Uh, I mean, it, it functions correctly, but um, essentially in Linux, it's kind of easy with virtual memory because it basically it makes it look like you have infinite amount of memory. So, which is kind of a cool feature of Linux, but sometimes it may not work on Windows, I think. Uh, and maybe on uh, ARM64 too, who knows. Um, mm, so, let me see, let me see. Uh, Alright, let me try to do it one more time. Uh -huh. Try to reduce the size of the arena to test uh, uh, we are trying to test the hypothesis that this is due to uh, BMR allocating too much static uh, memory so this is yeah I have to be really careful with these static arenas have to be really careful with the static arena. So uh, let me let me see. Let me see. It helps me though. Mm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I need a cup of tea. I really, really need a cup of tea. But yeah, but I almost done. Okay, so we're building everything. And... Eh, why don't you scroll? Okay, it worked. Yes, that was it. That was actually... Thank you, Kalambetka, for testing it on Windows and reminding me that uh, this is sort of a Pepega situation that I let myself to get into. It. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, all right. Another thing I wanted to test. I wanted to test if uh, if I break something, what will happen? Uh, okay. So, all right. Break. Fib test. We are trying to see if the Windows build will fail on failing tests. Okay, let's push that. Mm. Cool. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't fail, I'm going to create it to do for um, for reporting the error for Windows 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, toolchain. Toolchain is going fine. Uh, and... Okay, so it's the same uh, problem as uh, with Linux. Nice, nice, nice. Um, so child fail is not probably reported on Linux. Um, 
child file is not properly reported on Windows either. Cool. So uh, the thing I want to do now, maybe I'm going to uh, Windows. <laughs> maybe I'm going to uh, commit, like push that to a separate repo. Right. Uh, but before I, I will uh, I will uh, put that on a separate repo. I think I want to prepare the repo. I want to put a readme with an explanation, uh, with the um, reasoning behind the uh, the project. Because uh, like this idea of using C as the build tool for C projects like uh, weirds out people. People starts to like actively contest it or something uh, for for some reason without even understanding the context. So yeah, I want to write like a readme where I explain what's the goals of the project, what's the possible use cases, why you should use it, why you shouldn't use it, and stuff like that. And then every time somebody asks one of the questions that I answer like millions of time, I can just redirect them to readme. Uh, but it, in any case, apart from that, um, apart from that, uh, it works. So this is a cross-platform building tool right it can work uh, on linux it can work on windows it can work on mac os it can work with any compiler including msvc um right it's just like uh yeah it's just like a general framework for you to um to make build scripts but in c and it requires only one stage of bootstrapping where you just bootstrap the build tool itself without any special things or anything and then the tool keeps uh, uh, building everything what's interesting is that if for the build tool we ever need something more complex than just cc build uh, i think we'll implement that in several stages of the bootstrapping so you will only have to uh, bootstrap manually the first stage and every anything else is gonna basically build ourselves out of these stages so it's gonna be almost like booting up the operating system or bootstrapping the compiler or something so if the building the building tool will become too complex it's gonna it's gonna happen in several stages and you all only will have to do the first stage so this is gonna be basically the policy all right, so after the stream, uh, so yeah, after the stream, I'm gonna just, you know, uh, eat something and I'm gonna put that on the, on the GitHub uh, as a separate project. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna try to integrate it completely into the virtual machine project and see how it goes. Right, so I'm not 100% sure if this is a good idea to use C for building projects. Uh, it's more of a research project, as anything, pretty much anything else I do on this on this channel. Um, but in any case, boys and girls, it is time for me to go. I already stream for four hours, and yeah, thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one, and I see you all uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to continue doing a virtual machine. So even though today we did a build tool, it was still related to virtual machine, so it's a part of the virtual machine series anyway. So tomorrow we're going to continue doing virtual machine and build tool. Uh, so check out our schedule page for more information on different projects we're working on. Check out our VODs channel, where we upload uh, the recordings of our stream. This stream is going to be there, but tomorrow we even have a special separate playlist for virtual machine um, for virtual machine development. Maybe I'm going to create another playlist for build tool. Right, so basically you can add the same video to several playlists, so we're gonna have like overlapping playlists, so you're gonna have playlists related to virtual machine, or maybe if you care only about uh, build to de development, it's gonna be also a separate list, a separate playlist. Uh, also check out our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. Uh, thanks everyone for watching, uh, love you. Mwah.